It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. The brilliant is Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots. Uh, welcome to another quarantine motherfucking week of the uh, Brilliant Idiots podcast. Um, are you going stir crazy yet, Andrew? Nah, not really, man. I'm I'm enjoying life. Yeah, me too. But you're at home, right? You haven't left the crib at all? I haven't left the crib at all. I uh, went to the grocery store one time. Uh, right. I think that was maybe last Sunday, Sunday before last. Uh, might risk my life going to the grocery store again this week. What'd you get? Um, I mean, just I don't remember like I like food. Like, nah, don't lie. Dog shit like that, I don't remember. Don't lie. You know, there's some specific shit. If you're going to the grocery store, there's oh, some hold on specific. One second. What's shit. up, baby? No, I'm recording something. Okay, Can you turn that down maybe a little bit. I'm right. just a little worried about bleeding in. Is it bleeding in at all? But I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna risk my life to go to the grocery store um again this week. Yeah, and pick up some more stuff. Are you um, in- and hopefully just, you know, I, I, I like the fact I, I actually, you know, what's so dope about life What's dope about life is watching uh, the news now, like watching Cuomo and watching, you know, CNN. Right. And how they're talking about the curve starting to flatten in New York. Right. It's been about four days of good of good news coverage. You know what I'm saying? For the most part. I mean, don't get me wrong. People are dying. Yeah. Which is horrible. But they're saying that the curve is starting to get flattened in New York. And I'm seeing that like even in uh, in Europe. I think that they said that it's working. New Zealand. New Zealand said they didn't flatten their curve. They smashed it. Mm. And it's all because of this uh, social distancing. So I would just tell everybody to continue to do that. Yo, it's you know? weird, the social distancing, because I don't really understand it. Explain. It's quite simple. <laughs> like, I get the... How the fuck does it transfer? That's what I'm trying to understand. <laughs> what do you mean? I mean, I don't get it. Like, how does it transfer? Like, if I'm around you, all of a sudden I breathe. When you breathe, then it goes. Well, I don't. I, I read that. I don't know. I, that that sounds a bit much to me. But who am I to argue with the experts? The experts said that if you breathe, if you talk, it can be transferred. So then, uh, why are they droplets. letting us go to the grocery store? Like, if if us just being in the grocery store and we're breathing in this controlled environment, if that's what transfers it, then a hundred percent you should say don't go to the grocery store, or that's where it's transferred. Well, that's why you got to wear the mask. And I mean, that's, I guess, like, we, we'll start, we, let's just start off the show. Uh, this is positively brilliant. Um, Chinese ahead of the curve again, man. Chinese and Michael Jackson, baby. Okay? Sorry. Chinese been wearing masks at the airports <laughs> forever. Yeah, but. And we, and we well, used to be wondering what the fuck do they know? What's wrong with them? What's wrong with our good old American air? Son, what <laughs> good did it help them? That's where it started. I mean, it started in Wuhan, but clearly they was prepared. So they were not prepared. None of this shit works. I guess what I'm trying to say is, is if it's going to get you, it's going to get you. Like every, like Fauci was on TV today or yesterday. He was on TV. He's like, I don't think Americans should shake hands anymore even after this. And I'm like, do you know how Chinese people greet each other? A bow. That shit don't stop nothing. Well, if it's going to uh, get Ch- you, it's going to get you. Well, unless China's lying, they got a handle on it better than uh, most. And, China and Wuhan. lying? Wuhan doesn't have their lockdown anymore. They announced that today. After 76 days, there's no more lockdown. I don't believe nothing that comes out of China. Absolutely nothing. Only the sneakers. Let's, well, let's believe the numbers that are here in uh, New York. If they're saying the curve is starting to flatten, great. But when all of this shit is over, I'm still going to put on my motherfucking mask. I'm going to still put on my motherfucking gloves. I might even get me a goddamn monkey to really pay homage to Michael Jackson. You sure. hear me? I might just go all the fucking way with it. So you're okay. saying you're never going to go back to normal life. You're going to nah, let the virus win. Nah, that's a wrap. Normal, normal as we know it is a wrap. By the way, normal as we know it hasn't been normal for three years. <laughs> like it's just, what you mean? Like, it hasn't been normal for three years. Like, let's, I'm going to be honest. Normal for some people hasn't been normal for 11 years. Because think about how abnormal a black president was for some people. <laughs> right? And I was having this conversation with somebody yesterday. Um, tell me what you think about this. Very an idiot hot take. Everybody says, oh, things would have been so much different if, uh, you know, Barack Obama was in the White House. And yeah, I mean, Barack might have responded much quicker. Of course, there would have been a global pandemic team in place. But I still think you would have had a a different method, but kind of like the same outcome. And the reason I I think that is because it's the same reason for Donald Trump. Donald Trump tells everybody to stay home and that, you know, uh, they need to practice social distancing. And if Donald Trump was to implement a a, a mandatory mandate, throughout the country for everybody to stay home. People just automatically want to rebel. They just want to rebel against government. They're like, fuck that. 
This guy's a racist. He's a bigot. We don't believe in martial law. We're going to rebel against this shit. Do you really think that those uh, rural white southerners are going to listen to a black man telling them to stay home? Yeah. Do you really believe that? Yeah. No, not at all. They, they would have rebelled against Obama the same way people on the left want to rebel against Trump right now. And then, listen, whether you agree with Donald Trump or not, if he's telling you, along with the CDC and Dr. Fauci and all these people, stay in the house, social distancing, instead of trying to come up with all these conspiracy theories like, oh, 5G towers and they just trying to implement martial law. How about just listen to the fucking CDC? For one, even, yo, a broken clock can be right twice a day. Yeah. You don't have to agree with nothing else he says. But if he tells you to social distance because it will stop, you know, it will flatten the curve and stop spreading shit, listen to him. But a lot of people just aren't going to listen to him because he's Donald Trump. Just like a lot of people wouldn't have listened just because it's Barack Obama. And I think we'd have been in the same place. I think that we don't listen because we have a rebellious spirit and it's really difficult to tell Americans what to do. You almost have to tell them the opposite and then we'll do it. It's very difficult. If, because if you don't tell Americans what to do, we're going to rebel. If you do tell Americans what to do, we're going to rebel. If you tell us to stay inside, we're going to be like, fuck it. No, I'm going to the beach. I'm going to church. I'm going to the grocery store. I'm going to do whatever It depends who's telling you, shows. I think that it depends fractionally. I think that we are so rebellious in our nature. Every movie is about rebellion. Like we just constantly have to rebel. It's part of our culture, right? The country was started in rebellion. Like this is just what we do. And I think that, I think that it, even if you didn't tell us to stay inside, we would rebel anyway. We'd be like, oh, you just want us to die? You just want everybody to die? Nah, fuck that. We're staying inside. We're not going to work. We're not. We need to constantly rebel, you know? Yeah, I think you got some motherfuckers that would definitely rebel. America definitely uh, doesn't have the discipline. And, you know, we have a lot of freedom here in America and we exercise it often. But I do think it depends on who is telling you what to do. You, you got to understand we're, we're, we're at a war, right? Our podcast is named perfectly. Yeah, because there's only two type of people in this world. Right. The brilliant ones and the idiots. Right. The small ones and the stupid people. Yeah. And sadly, most times often than not smart people got to suffer for the stupid ones. And yeah. that's what's happening right now. <laughs> like, yeah. like, so you are going to have some stupid people who are going to rebel just for the sake of motherfucking rebelling, regardless of who the president is. Right. And, and some of it is tribal. Like, nah, fuck that. I'm not listening to Trump. Fuck that. I wouldn't listen to Obama. Right. Right. But some of it is plain old, good old fashioned American stupidity. And we have to suffer for those motherfuckers. Yeah. So you're saying just like, hey, everybody go inside and, and, you know, do what they told you to do. What? What is so hard about that? I By don't the way, know, man. you're not going nowhere. But Andrew, you're, you don't not, you really realize in these moments you really ain't doing shit outside. No, I know that. But they call me crazy. But there's something about there's something about the government just telling you to do something and then you do it without questioning. And like there's two ways of getting, I feel, well, there's multiple ways, but there's, a, there's multiple ways of getting a, a, a group of people, a populace, if you will, to do what you want them to do, right? Yeah. There's the Soviet way, which is, hey, if you don't do it, we're going to kill you. And uh, if you tell your friends not to do it, we're going to kill them and kill you. So you constantly live in fear, right? And then there's the American way where they trick you into thinking you're doing it because you're free, right? So right now what they've done is they found a way to manipulate us into telling each other to stay inside it's really funny like if you go outside you'll be shamed by your fellow citizens they're like what are you doing outside get the fuck inside you gotta stay inside i'm like okay i'll stay inside well you're not six feet away so now we're bullying each other into doing exactly what the government wants and i think that that's probably good because we need to make sure we stay alive but I don't want to give each them other. too much power. I don't want to. I don't want to just do whatever the fucking government says because that hasn't worked out in the past. Well, listen, I, I I love this. I love this. This is the perfect uh uh positively brilliant what a fucking idiot segment because yeah. you can go either way on it. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I, I agree with you. You don't want to give the government too much power, and I also agree that the government is um leaving it up to us as a matter of choice. And I think for the most part, most Americans are making the right decision, but for the ones that aren't. Now's the time to put the hammer down on these motherfuckers, bro. Like, what would you do to people who break the rules? You find the shit out of them. At a time like this, when motherfuckers, their pockets is already hurting, 
Now I'm going to find the shit out you. Now I'm going to find you $10,000. And guess what? In Philly, they're giving people fucking warrants. And them shit is like basically IOUs. <laughs> really? Like I'm, I'm, yes. So we're going to arrest you when this shit is better. We're going to arrest you when this shit is over. <laughs> I like that too. Because a year from now, you just cooling out, minding your business. Nah, motherfucker. Remember when you didn't want to social distance and you was out there putting people's lives at, at, at risk? Fuck that. We're going to lock you the fuck up. So I agree with you. You don't want to give the government too much power, but we also got to look out for the stupid, bro. How are you putting people's lives at risk if you go outside? Because young people, a lot of people are asymptomatic and they don't show any symptoms, but they could be carrying it and they pass it off to uh, older people or just people who have pre-existing medical conditions that causes them to, you know, causes it to be fatal to, to them. But if everyone's supposed to be inside, then you don't bump into anybody outside. That's not true. You just said everybody's got to stay inside. But everybody's not staying inside. That's the point. Well, if you choose to not stay inside, then you're making a choice to risk your life. Well, it depends. Like you, you can go to the you can go outside to go to the grocery store. You can go outside to go to the pharmacy. You know, uh, I, I think those are essential things. I actually think voting is something they need to add to the essential list, because if they don't, motherfuckers going to really be in trouble come November. OK, because if you think Donald Trump's not going to use this to his advantage, you got your goddamn rabbit ass mind. Don't you think that if we're talking about voting, don't you think that like we're in trouble no matter what? Like, who do you really want? You want Biden or you want Trump? Be honest. Um, you think Biden well, can negotiate peace with another country? You think Biden is going to be negotiating with China? I can't I, I can't I can't sit here and say I would want Trump after what I've seen Trump do the past. Trump bobbled this shit. It did a fucking horrible job. But Biden is going to be in China thinking he's negotiating with North Korea. He's going to have no fucking clue what's going on. Listen, I'm no, I'm no Joe Biden fan at all, but one fundamental difference between Joe Biden and Donald Trump, I think Joe Biden will surround himself with the right people and Joe Biden will listen. Donald you, Trump ain't listening to no fucking body. You don't think that Biden's just a puppet? That's fine. I'm fine with a puppet as long as you, the right people, as long as the right people got their hand up your ass. <laughs> telling you what to say so, I am perfectly fine with a puppet as long as that puppet has the right people's hand up his ass making him talk so yeah, my, I guess I'm perfectly fine with that I guess my Bernie dropped is, out today by the I way I know that's why I'm saying and I'm bummed about that and uh I want hit that to be my what a fucking idiot but uh go ahead go in but uh well first just about the Biden thing it's like I think Trump did an absolutely horrible job he continu continues to do a horrible job with the fucking uh Coronavirus, 100%. And then, and, and, and then you know, a poll came out yet, yesterday for Politico where I think it was like 58% of the people said Barack Obama would, would, would do the best job. He would. Donald Trump, and they said Donald Trump, they voted Donald Trump would do a better job than Joe Biden would. I mean, Donald, Joe Biden would be, do a good as job as his handlers would allow him to do. Like, I think Biden is is a puppet of the establishment. So if you like the Democratic establishment, I think you when you decide to vote now, you got to go, what has the Dem Democratic establishment done for me? And if you think throughout the past the Democratic establishment has done good things for you, then that should be the person you vote for. If you don't think they do good things, then you don't vote for them. That's as simple as that. But don't think Biden is going to have his own self-interest. This guy's talking about peanut butter and jelly sandwiches in interviews. Mm -hmm. I'm like fine right now, it. there's a fucking global pandemic and the Biden... The Biden uh, campaign is putting out videos of him talking about why Fig Newtons are his favorite treat. Nobody gives a fuck so about Joe, Fig Newtons. I, I, I told y'all this last week, and this can go into what a fucking idiot. Joe Biden sucks. His Bruh. campaign sucks. I told y'all when, when Donald Trump was on TV every day talking to the American people during this coronavirus pandemic, Joe Biden should have been offering counter programming. Do you know Joe Biden did a town hall last night? I wish I saw it. Nobody cared. That's my whole point. Nine o'clock, CNN, nobody gave And we fuck. had nothing to do. We would love to see him just bumble his words for a fucking hour straight. That'd be amazing. But nobody knew. And they don't want us to know because they don't want you watching him. Can we, I mean, I can't even believe that we're in this situation. I can. And the reason I can believe that we're in this situation is simply because, like I said, they ran a horrible campaign. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that Joe Biden is not, he's not all there, bro. Bro. Like, them, 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 those cognitive, uh, what do you call that shit? The synapses, the synapses huh? aren't firing. Whatever His cognitive the abilities low. That Nintendo game need to get blown on. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> that shit, yeah, that shit, that, shit, that shit is on the motherfucking fridge. And I just really think that they dropped the ball in such a real way. And I keep telling people, Donald Trump is not losing. 
you have to go beat the champ, baby. You're not gonna win. You're yeah. not gonna win on a decision, baby. You gotta go out there and knock this motherfucker out. And I don't see the fight. I don't see it. I see Donald Trump every day with his chest out. I see Cuomo out there every day with his chest out to the point to where even today on CNN, literally when Bernie dropped out, they were talking about Cuomo's already said he's not about to, you know, make any late push to be president. So what does that tell you? I mean, even they know if he Joe's wanted not to, the guy. even if he wanted to, he couldn't. Right. He doesn't have enough delegates like that's why Bernie dropped out. He just can't win the, the right amount of delegates. Right. Um, Bernie didn't have to drop out, but I think Bernie dropped out because he didn't see a path to victory. But also, I think that they want to um, I think he wants to give, you know, Joe time to not only. First of all, Bernie got to get out Sorry. of the way so Joe can announce his running mate. So Joe can show what his cabinet's going to look like. So Bernie can rally his supporters to support Joe Biden. What? Like, it's going to take time. Do it now. It's April. You got till November to turn this shit around. But right now, the Democrats look fucking terrible. With all due respect to Bernie Sanders, he is a monumental pussy. What a fucking me. pussy, man. Talk to me. This is You're going to die soon. This is your last chance. Go out swinging. Why was he playing so fucking polite? If you really care about the people, if you truly want to help the people, you'll do whatever it takes, right? You'll do whatever it takes to get power. Power is not handed over. Never in history is power handed over. You have to tear it out of people's fucking hands. That's why I say you got to beat Trump in November. Beat Trump in November. Literally beat, you right? You got to go take that shit from him. And in order to take it from him, you got to take it from the Democratic establishment. The Democratic establishment has been playing games. They yank that shit out of Bernie's hands every single primary, right? Every single primary, you see some foul shit go down where they yank it out of his fucking hands. And he's seen this game played before and he refused to play it. Well, then you don't want to win bad enough, bro. I know you want to be a good guy and maybe you want to go to heaven or whatever the fuck it is, but if you truly want to help people, sometimes you got to be Batman. Sometimes, sometimes you got to be, be Batman. Batman. Put on the know? fucking mask and play ball, dude. And he just doesn't care to help enough. He And I really... It's, it it I, drives I me crazy. Analogy, and the Democrats don't even have an Ant-Man. Well, they do have an Ant-Man. His name is Andrew Yang. I always <laughs> said that I felt like Andrew Yang was Ant-Man. But he's not running for president. They don't have no. Bro, they don't have no leader, bro. This is how. This is how. This is how pussy Bernie is right now. Literally everything both the Republicans and the Democrats are doing in this moment is Bernie policy. Big government helping out the people, giving away money, forgiving yeah. loans, figuring out ways to make health care free, figuring yeah. out ways to forgive college loans. It's all of his priorities it's his whole platform and his pussy ass won't just stand up and go guys this is what i've been saying from the longest you have no problem being a welfare state when going gets rough why can't we do it we you are literally being a socialist country in this moment why can't we be democratically socialist he didn't, didn't even, even fucking peep that shit he didn't even say it like it was right there for him that was his i told you so moment that's it this is this was his this is what i have been trying to do america i've been trying to give y'all fucking money <laughs> to get y'all out of the, the terrible conditions that y'all are in he wouldn't even do that i totally fucking he don't deserve it bro. agree he don't deserve it he just wants to ruffle some shit up but he's not down to risk his fucking life to make it happen man and it pisses me off because i've been such a big supporter of his ass every time he runs and I say that he's being taken out, but it's hard to support someone who don't want it. It's hard to back no, it. it. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's hard to back a fighter who, once he gets in the ring, he pussies out. No, and that's I what I feel like I'm doing with Bernie, man. It's like, I agree I'm, with you 100%. Um, I think the best thing Bernie can do right now is rally his supporters. To do what? Um, to do what? Support Joe, support Joe Biden. Yo, yeah, Because listen, what you said is true. This is it for you, Bernie. But listen, maybe Bernie can at least get in the White House. Maybe he'll get a position. What position is Biden going to really give him? The establishment that literally broke his back because he's uncorruptible. You think that they're going to give him any power in the White House? The only power to. he's going to have in the White House is handing Joe Biden his fucking applesauce. No. That's the only thing <laughs> that he could possibly do while Biden sits there and has no clue where he is. Wow, this room's an oval. That's all he's going to say. <laughs> he's Listen, lost. They... Bernie's fucking lost. They just hand the election to Trump. And low-key, I'm kind of thinking they want that. And you know who's been real fucking quiet, bro? This is where you see all Elizabeth the shit. Warren. Say what? Oh, Elizabeth Warren been silent. You know who else been quiet? AOC been real quiet lately, right? Oh, Where's AOC? Nah. She's she she not know, hanging out with the actually, girls no more? What, what, nah, what she, happened to the girl gang? She putting a little nah, six feet of quiet. distance? Social distancing from the, the girl gang? 
No, nah, she hasn't been quiet. Ooh. AOC, AOC's been out. She's actually been out there on the front lines in a lot of ways. I think um, what I'm actually watching AOC do, which I, I thought was interesting, she's actually been trying to bridge the gap, so to speak. Oh, between, now she, now she want to be now she want to be establishment, huh? She got a little taste. I don't think she want to be establishment, but I think that you know establishment could use some of those new radical ideas, Bruh, All I'm saying is, where was she when Bernie needed it? Call she's it out. She got real quiet. Nah, she stomped for Bernie. She stomped for Bernie in the beginning, but then when it didn't look good, she didn't call out the Democratic establishment totally fucking over Bernie again. She got real quiet, played her position. No, she definitely did. No, when? she did. AOC did. AOC did. Linda Sarsour did. Sean King did. Like, they all... When did AOC say it? That was early this year. That was, like, right, right around February. Mm. Whenever, whenever, whenever he first won those first few states. She didn't, she didn't back away because she even came on Breakfast Club. Shh. What she say on Breakfast Club? She even came on Breakfast Club. She, she was making her rounds. She did Breakfast Club either late February, early March, if I'm and, not mistaken. And then what was she saying? I don't fucking remember. You know, my memory is bad, but I definitely know she was in there showing her support for Bernie Sanders in a real way. But could she criticize the establishment? I guess my, my prediction is that she is going to lean in and be part of the establishment democratic politics where she started as this radical and they've kind of pulled her in. And they've said, hey, shut your mouth. Only talk when we say talk. And then you could have some serious power. And then she was like, yes, daddy, I'll do whatever you say. Like I mean, all the sad, these fucking politicians the, end up doing. Yeah, I mean, that's, the, that's what I was about to say. The sad thing about politics is eventually you got to play politics. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 eventually, yeah, yeah. the sad thing about politics is eventually you got to be a motherfucking politician. That's just the way the game works. Oh, yeah, we had some tef- technical difficulties right there. We're back. I don't even remember where we were. Something. We were talking about AOC. We put a button on that though because we were just saying how you know if you play politics too long, if you started out with the people and then you jump over to establishment politics, you kind of lose the people. I just think the Democrats are in trouble in November. That's all the fuck I know. And it's sad because Donald Trump is giving Donald Trump is giving them every lay up possible to like look like the good guys joe biden can't even step out and look like a leader for two seconds like right now i promise you if joe biden had been doing counter programming every day to donald trump he would at least look like a leader raise some money do do something he hasn't done none of that and it just looks bad it just looks bad on the democratic party and we haven't even we haven't even seen him go out and just do like a psa where he goes support healthcare workers that's bare minimum. I don't know if he's done that or not. That seems, like, you know what's so funny? That's so bare minimum. I'm almost like maybe he's done that, but I haven't seen it if he has. Well, then promote it. Let's find a certain way. He, the only video I've seen is him talking about fig newtons and peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And <laughs> that's what people in an old person home do, right? That's what senile people talk about, the things that they eat all day. They're feeding him peanut butter and jelly and fig newtons. It doesn't scare you that our two president, uh, the, the Democratic presidential candidate and the president, are in the prime age to die of coronavirus? Son. Yes. <laughs> yeah. They get that shit, bro. Yo, that's why Mike Pence didn't do anything about corona because he found out it kills old people. He's like, all right, let me knock this motherfucker out of here so I could be president. Yo, um, I agree with you. I think he might be in on the on the, on the joke. He might be in on the on the jig. All right. Uh, let's do some church announcements, Schultz. Yo, uh, <clears throat> big news. We are rescheduling the uh, my special. Uh, everybody that bought tickets uh, for the shows at the Orpheum in L.A., uh, we are not going to do them this weekend, obviously, because of Corona, but we are going to do them in November. So you will get those rescheduled November 13th, 14th. Make sure you go. Your tickets are still good to that. If you can go, please be there. If you can't, we totally understand. Um, Ticketmaster will be able to refund you if you cannot make it. Um, but yeah, we appreciate you, man. Thank you guys, everybody who's reached out and said that they're excited for and they're, you know, rescheduling trips, et cetera. And thank you very much, man. It means a lot. I wish we didn't have to cancel it, but you know, you got to do these certain things and same goes with a lot of these other gigs. So we're basically rescheduling dates right now, but we're holding on before we announce them, uh, because we don't want to say, yeah, we're all going to be back in June and then everything's still shut down in June. So as soon as we know things are confirmed and we can predict the future of live entertainment, I will let you guys know the new dates and all those tickets that you guys purchased for, for, for shows that have been canceled, or rescheduled will still be good. I promise you they will still be good. So, um, and if you need anything, I'm sure the venue will take care of you if you ever need to, uh, get a uh, ticket exchanged, etc. So those are my church announcements and also make sure you check out 
Flagrant 2, man, I'm doing daily podcasts over there. So if you need some distraction, you need some fun, we're doing a new podcast every day. Man, I did an interview with Doc Antle from the Tiger King. So we had uh, him on the podcast. That was really cool. Uh, I also did an interview with uh, El Chapo's lawyer, and he told me how money laundering works and uh, like why he can defend crazy people like El Chapo. And So we just got some cool interviews going up there over at Flagrant 2. So check out either the YouTube or the everywhere podcasts or streams, man. Dope. Taylor, did I have any church announcements? I saw you had something down for me. Um, it's your national day in Columbus. Oh, in yeah, yes, oh shit. Yes. Really? Yes. Well, to, well, we're taping this on April 8th. This comes out on April 9th. Yes. Yesterday <clears throat> was Charlemagne the God Day in Columbia, South Carolina. Um, Stephen Benjamin, the mayor of Columbia, South Carolina, he gave me that day back in 2017. And I've always wanted to do something on that day because I always think it's real cool how trade, trade, a, trade the truth. He does trade in Houston. And um, I think I even, <clears throat> Angelie, she has a day and she does stuff in Brooklyn. And I think that's so dope. And so what I wanted to do was I had something planned for April the 8th and something that I've been working on for a while. Um, salute to Michelle Austin of Hot 1039 in Columbia, South Carolina, promotions director down there. We was working on that. But cover, and salute to my homegirl, Kim Fields. You know what I mean? Kim, Kim was helping me with that as well. And, um, yeah, Corona put, a, Corona put a stop to all of that shit, baby. So hopefully I'll get to do it again later this year uh, if we're allowed to congregate in large crowds together. If not, uh, April 8th, 2021, inshallah, God willing, yes, I will be doing, uh, doing something for Charlemagne the God Day in Columbia, South Carolina, because I really appreciate Columbia. I got a lot of love for Columbia, man. I really, um, I really learned the game of radio in a different way in Columbia, South Carolina. I would say that I sharpened all my interview skills uh, in Columbia, South Carolina in a real way. So, well, congrats, yeah. man. That's fucking dope, dude. Yeah, salute to everybody in Columbia. All right, uh, back to the show. Jake. I want to say, too, man, you know who else is positively brilliant? Motherfucking Howard Stern. The gold of all golds, bro. I didn't say whatever see the fuck interview. you want about Howard Stern. You know, you can scream all day that Howard Stern. Oh, Howard Stern's not relevant because he's on satellite radio. That's bullshit. When Howard wants to show you his dick and show you how big it is, he does it. And when he does it, he shows you that he's better than every fu- every fucking body else. So what happened? You're talking about the Tom Brady? Yeah. And he, listen, I, I look at Howard Stern and, man, Howard Stern really makes me... I mean, I guess it's different. For, I don't know if it's different for me or not, to be honest with you, because I do radio every day. And Howard... I don't think he does radio daily anymore. I think he does, like, maybe two days a week. But when Howard flexes, he flexes. The last interview he had that I remember before this was Hillary Clinton. Right? Yeah. And now Tom Brady. He got more out of Tom Brady over the phone. First, he was trying to do a Zoom interview. And, you know, it was, it was fucking up. Wi-Fi probably terrible. But then he got on the phone. He got more out of Tom Brady in that, in that interview than people have gotten out of Tom Brady in 20 fucking years. What were the highlights and, the number, and Howard Stern is currently the number one trending topic on Twitter right now. It's like 67,000 tweets because they're killing ESPN because ESPN took his voice out of the audio that they use for Tom Brady's interview. Why? I don't fucking know. Probably mad. Think, yo, yo, can, imagine being a sports network. By the way, this shows you that all them traditional ways of doing things is out, doing shit is out of the window. Um, yeah, we got cut off again. But no, what I was saying was imagine being ESPN a first take. You don't got no fucking sports going on right now. <laughs> no, no basketball, no baseball. You know, you're still talking about football a little bit. And all you're talking about over and over is the Michael Jordan documentary that you had to put that you had to push up ESPN. And every day is a topic about Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan is Michael Jordan better than is LeBron better than Michael. Who's the new? Is this always a new Michael Jordan topic? Meanwhile, the greatest NFL quarterback of all time decided to sit down with a radio personality. Fuck your sports networks. <laughs> Fuck your sports shows. I want to sit down and I want to talk to somebody where I can really just be myself, where I can really just kick it. And Howard Stern did what he always does. There's one thing when you get those big guests. It's another to knock it out the park with those big guests. Right now, Howard Stern is the number one trending topic on Twitter. And Tom Brady is trending. And he asked about them dicks. I didn't hear it yet. Apparently, he asked about uh, Gronk's dick size and the other guy's dick size in the locker room. Classic Howard. That's Howard, bro. Howard That's doesn't Howard. need to be bougie. Doesn't need to be fancy. He asks the questions we want to know. I want to know if they got big dicks. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? I want to know what them that. NFL the dicks six look six like. <laughs> Listen. What I happened? wouldn't ask about it if I hadn't heard about it. You got to pin it? Say again? I wouldn't ask about it if I hadn't heard about it. What you mean? Like, if that was something I had heard. Yeah. You know what I mean? I might be like, yo, what's up with them dicks in the locker room? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I want to hear, I got to hear how he got into the conversation about it. I haven't heard it yet. I'm just excited because um, it's Howard fucking Stern. And, you yeah. know, you'll hear people tell you, like, Howard Stern doesn't have the same relevancy because he's on satellite radio. Howard Stern is the reason satellite radio is, is thriving right now. And satellite radio is making a move towards, uh, I think, video. I've seen a lot more video come out of there. A lot more video on YouTube. Well, I know at one point, um, uh, I know at least Shade 45 wouldn't allow certain certain shows to record video, but a lot of people did it anyway. Like, like you know, Sway, back in the day right? when Angela Yee had um, the morning after she did it anyway. Sway definitely does it anyway. <clears throat> um, Howard, I still see Howard videos. So Howard does it when he wants to. Yeah, I don't know, man. I feel like I feel like Howard is just such a professional and he's just such a fucking like he commands respect from the guest as well, especially an older guest like these younger people listening right now. Right. They might not know who Howard is. They might not really care about Howard, but someone that is 43 years old, like Tom Brady puts Howard on Mount Rushmore. He is on Mount Rushmore. Right. Howard is still the GOAT. Yeah, but you have to understand, like, if you're a young kid, like a young kid today, right, who thinks Lil Uzi Vert is the best rapper ever, probably doesn't understand who Tupac is or who Biggie is, right? Who Rock no, Kim is. Saying. You know what I mean? So it's a generational thing. And I think that, like, I think how I think Tom Brady, because of his age, has so much respect for Howard. He probably went on that show knowing I'm gonna drop some jewels. And I probably waited to drop some jewels on this specific show because that's what you do on Howard. You know what, man? I think this is a good way to get into the deep dive. Um, Cause I was having a conversation about this yesterday uh, with, with Taylor and Michaela and Sam and Nyla. And I was telling them, you know, you can't lead with young, right? Okay. And what I mean by that is young is fleeting. If young is your foundation, if you're standing on a platform and you're saying, I want to be on, I, I, I should be in this position because I'm young or, you know, old people got to get out the way and make room for the young people and this and that. Well, that just means you're going to be around for four years, depending on how old you are, eight years, depending on how old you are, because youth is fleeting. So once I don't need that young person anymore, I'm just going to go grab me another young person. So what you should really be is experienced, skilled, interesting, unique, because those things stand the test of time. Howard Stern has evolved as an interviewer. He's always been interesting and entertaining, but over the years, he's evolved to become one of the best interviewers that our generation has ever seen, right? A lot of it has to do with therapy. He really knows how to get inside people's minds, but he can still give you classic Howard and mm. talk about them dicks. Mm. So it's still it's still entertaining. I'm just I was just simply saying you can't lead with young. Yeah, because if you, can't you just have at, young, if you look at the companies that that have tried to like lead with young, they're flopping right now. Like I don't even know if MTV makes shows anymore. Like I I don't know. A good I, question. I, I, don't know. <laughs> I cannot tell you if they make shows or if they don't make shows. I truly don't know. I remember they used to. Bro, I haven't heard I haven't heard the name MTV in so goddamn long. Bro, because what's on? It's like, is it TRL? Like, what's what is literally happening? Yeah, and I mean that's the thing, right? The reason is is because they cater to um they cater to a certain demo that doesn't give a fuck. Who does? And what I mean, MTV. No, they they cater to a demo that doesn't know anything. That's what they. Well, they don't know to. anything, but they also don't they all, they also don't give a fuck to know. No, I'm not even going to say that. I'm not going to say they don't give a fuck to know. They are interested in certain things. They're just not interested in that. This is the problem. You got a bunch of executives sitting in a room that's all 50 plus years old trying to say, what does a 15 year old like? What does a 16 year old like? 15 year olds and 16 year olds minds change every single day. Every, every, every day they're on to something new. Mm -hmm. You're going to bust your fucking ass trying to keep up with them. Only thing you should focus on is, is it interesting? 
Is it unique? Can I, can I, can I learn from it? Is it entertaining? Those four things right there stand the test of time, bro. Yeah. And guess what? If you're a young person who has all four of those things, as you grow and as you evolve, you will continue to grow and evolve and your information will change. But those four core things will never change. Only thing will change is your age. Mm. I just want to know what happens when when you're not the new young hot thing anymore. That, that you can't stand on youth. I, I used to I was that guy back in the day. I, I put out a mixtape, me and my dude, DJ Frosty, called Disrespect Your Elders. Right. Because I was I was dissing all the older folks at the goddamn radio station. Mm-hmm. And then you realize like, man. You got a birthday too. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If so, you're lucky. so what happens when you're not that new young thing no more? Are you are you afraid of any young comedians if they're not funny? If a comedian is challenging you, Schultz, yeah. and they're like, I'll bust your ass, I'm younger than you. Yeah. You think that's a good weapon to bring to war? No. No, because I don't see any young comedians with careers, really. Break it down. I mean, I don't know any a single young comedian that has a career I would trade with trade right now. Yeah, yeah, I feel what you're saying. Like, name any successful young career, young comedian. The no, only one I could, I, the only one I could probably think of is Pete, and I would never trade my life for his career, though. Yeah, even that, hell no. Okay. I mean, even when he was on your podcast, he seems miserable in his career. Um, nah, I don't think he's miserable in his career. I think that's actually the only thing that makes him happy. Going on SNL? Oh no, not SNL. But well, I mean, that's, that's because of the way about. he's treated. Yeah, yeah, but that, yeah, I get what you're saying. But that's because the way, yeah, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't trade places to be treated like that at SNL. I get what you're saying. Now, hell no. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get it. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it. <clears throat> the people that I always looked up to, people whose careers I respect, have always been older. Like comedy is an old man's game. That's what people don't realize. Like nobody wants to hear what some young kid has to say that's funny. No one wants to hear some young kid pontificate about the world. Right, because it depends what his it depends what his worldview is. Like, like I said, if he's unique, if he has a unique POV that we've never heard before, name it, bro. Um, Chappelle been interesting, but once he hit I mean, forty, I, people were like, "Oh shit, he's the goat." Yeah, but people found him funny back then. They though. found him funny, but that's different than like being the goats. If you look at the goats of comedy, they've always been older. Well, well goats come with time, though. That's I the, mean, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, we're I agreeing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So it's like, like the one person I can remember having incredible success at a young age and still has a lot of respect is Eddie. Eddie. Murphy. He's the only one, and that's a testament to how great Eddie was, bro. But that goes back to what I'm saying. You're, you're absolutely right. You have to be unique. You got to be smart. You got to be skilled. You got to have an interesting POV. All of those things have to come into play, and 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 that happens. You see that early on. Mm-hmm. You can look at a young kid and be like, man, this guy got a real. Unique story. And as you grow, those things don't change. Like, Not you're still going to be unique. You're still going to have an interesting POV. You're still going to be funny. You're still going to be smart. You just get more and more and more experience. And that's when you, you know, end up in go territory. Uh, and I was even telling them yesterday, like, man, it's so weird to me when I hear somebody say, old people got to move out of the way and give young people a chance. That's pussy to me, mm. especially in 2020 when. You have all the tools and resources that I didn't have when I was coming up. Yeah. I look at the best personalities that I've grown to love yeah. over the past, you know, five years. It's the Kid Fury and Crystals. It's the Jesus and Marrows. It's the Tax Stones. It's the Gia Peppers. It's the, the Scotty Beams. Like, all of these people... For the most part, I think Scott Scotty started in radio, but the rest of them created their own platforms to be seen and to be heard. 85 South Show. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Carlos Miller, Chico B, DCM Fly. They all created their own platforms. They didn't wait for no fucking body. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, the, and, and most of them got platforms that are bigger than some radio shows. Right. So it's like, don't sit around and wait for somebody to give you something because guess what that's never gonna fucking happen joe biden you gotta go fucking take that shit so all you young people with that mindset that's an old fucking played out mindset i will Build say your one own thing. and take it i will say one thing where we should be ageist there is one there is one uh game in which you can judge someone for their age and they shouldn't be here because of their age and that is politics old people should not be making decisions about the world that they won't be here for 
right? I don't need Donald Trump or Joe Biden making decisions about the environment when they won't be here for the effects of their decisions. I don't need I them mean, making decisions about the infrastructure of the, com- of the country when you're not going to be here for your decisions. Like, let let somebody who's 40 decide what we're going to do about the polar ice caps or about the forests or about, you know, using, you know, recycling goods or whatever. Let a motherfucker that got to live through the decision make the decision. I think you need old men for counsel, uh, young men for war. Because but why do you, I don't know. why are you getting counsel from someone who's not going to be here for the decision that he makes? Because they've been here already. So Joe so Biden is probably old enough the- to re- Joe Biden is probably old enough to remember all them other pandemics that happened. <laughs> like, <laughs> he might have been around when the first fucking flu hit America. You know what I mean? When that first fucking bout of influenza hit America, he might have been around for this. Pa- I'm sure he no, was. But here's the thing. I'm okay. I'm okay with an old person making a decision that's a now decision because they got all this wisdom, right? Mm-hmm. They're like the pandemic is a now decision. How do we handle this now? Right. Joe Biden was going to be like, look, back in the day during the bubonic plague, what we did was this. And then that will help us. Right. Yeah. But I don't care what Joe Biden has to say about the environment because he's not going to live for that decision to come for whip to fruition. I don't agree with that because you can still care about what happens now because he got grandkids. He got he got children that's going to still be here long after he's gone. Bro, his so son can, is out there smoking care about crack. That. He don't care about his kids. Okay. I mean, you always gonna have one fuck up. <laughs> Are you? It's Joe's second family. Oh, he had another family. Yeah, didn't uh, Chris correct, correct me if I'm wrong? Didn't Joe Biden's family? We're not like, gonna hear Chris. His original family died or something. Oh Jesus! <laughs> I don't know. Oh, this Jesus, is brilliant. Charlie. If you don't got time to fact oh, check Jesus. shit, I just, oh, man. I just know. I just know that this, this, this is not his first go around at this. All I'm simply saying is I don't knock anybody for their experience. I think that everybody's experience matters. I think young people's experience matters. I think old people's experience matters. All I'm simply saying is you just can't stand on the foundation of young. It's like a person can't stand on the foundation of old. Yes. Because you've been around. Don't mean that you know any goddamn thing. Yeah, just because, because you've been around. Don't mean that you a fucking OG. And sometimes, yeah, that's right. You might not be an OG. And sometimes the shit that you live through because of your age is actually tainting your worldview. You know, if like you ask a bunch of you, if you ask a bunch of people, right, if you're looking at them, I'm gonna get a little close here because I gotta, I gotta move some shit. Hey, babe. But if you ask a bunch of people, right, yeah. and you're like, ha, right up on you. We're about kissing right there. If you ask a bunch <laughs> of people and you're like, yo, uh, old, old, old people. You're like, yo, should black people and white people go to school together? They're gonna be a, a few of them are gonna be like, fuck no, we on it. Why, why would they go to school together, right? It's like, like you don't want to get all of your advice from old people because sometimes there's their wisdom is dated. Absolutely. You know, 100%. like you don't, you're not gonna go to so, your your great grandma and be like, hey, what do you think is the best thing to watch movies on? And she'll be 100%. like, well, in your car, you go to the drive thru That's not gonna be how you watch movies. Ask Taylor what I told her yesterday. I said my greatest skill is knowing that I don't know everything and staying fluid. Yeah. Always, always being willing to learn, you know, regardless of what my experiences have been, because that's what it's really about to me. It's about experience, right? Like you can have, you can be, you can be 25 and have had more experiences than a 40 year old, but Mm. you know, it's about experience and it's about that, that wisdom that comes with age, but you got to remain fluid up here. You can't be stuck in your ways. You always got to be willing to learn. Yeah, and she called that. Uh, Taylor said that was that was uh, that's called having a young mind. And I said, no, it's not. It's called having a fluid mind. It's called being open to change, being being willing to learn. You can be a hard headed old motherfucker or a young a young hard headed mo- old motherfucker. Yeah, you know what I mean, if you're hard headed and nothing can get through here, it don't matter. You're not going to ever be able to grow or be able to evolve or be able to help be able to help anybody else grow or evolve. Yeah, that's the tricky thing about life. It's like knowing what to be hard headed about and knowing what to be fluid about. Because sometimes if you're fluid about absolutely everything, you can get caught up in the hype. And sometimes you need to be disciplined and you need to have, you know, the foundation of your beliefs set in stone so it doesn't get rattled. You know, I, I trust my gut. Um, I trust my instincts. I trust my intuition. I, I, you know, the universe, God has shown me that he brings the right people in my life at the right time to, to tell me the right things and to guide me the right way and direct me the right way. But I, I ultimately know Decision is mine. The choice is mine. Um, so I, I, I can simply say I trust myself. You know what I mean? When it's something that I don't want to do, I'm not chalking it up to just being stubborn. I'm just simply, I simply don't want to do it. If I'm not feeling it, I'm not feeling it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, that, and that's, that's something I learned with, with experience and age, right? Because when you're young, you just, 
you just want to go. You just want to be involved with everything and you just move wherever the fucking wind blows until you realize no motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? It's not about how much you do. It's about doing the right thing. Yeah. That's it. You can do yeah. 10 different things and it could be a 10, 10, 10, 10 shit that don't lead you nowhere. Yeah. But you do that one thing that your heart is really into. Yeah. And you focus on that and shit opens up for you. All right, we're going to take a break for a second, pay some bills. Guys, girls, both of you, get your dicks hard, okay? You're in quarantine. You got to satisfy each other. I know you've been looking at each other every single day, staring at each other's faces. Are you tired of each other? Maybe you are. Still, you got to have sex. You got to satisfy those primal urges. And I'm telling you, the best way to do it is with the hardest dick in the modern world, supplied by <laughs> Blue Chew. Simple as that. Same active ingredients. It's in Viagra, Cialis. Only difference is it works twice as fast. That's right. You're chewing it up, getting in your system, and then getting you inside your girl. Give your girl the night of her life. She deserves it during this quarantine. Ladies, get your man to give you the night of your life. It's simple as that. Bluechew.com, and you use our promo code, IDIOTS, okay? Our promo code is IDIOTS. That's with an S at the end. IDIOTS. It's free, by the way, if you use the promo code IDIOTS. You just got to pay the $5 shipping. They're shipping that hard dick right to your house, Make sure you take advantage of it. Bluechew.com. Use the promo code IDIOTS. Untuck it. Uh, ever wonder why traditional button-ups look so long and baggy? That's because they were never meant to be worn that way. Untuck It shirts were specifically designed to be worn untucked. Untuck It is the brand you've been looking for. It's the original untucked shirt. All right, a modern solution to an old problem with no tucking or tailoring required. No matter your size or shape. You hear that, Taylor? No matter your size or shape. Their shirts are the perfect untucked length. All right. Uh, now, you fuck with Untuck It Heavy, right, Shows? I love Untuck It, man. If I need to have like a nice night out, but I don't want to look like a herb with my shirt tucked into my pants, I get that yeah. button down look. I look sophisticated. I get treated right. That's right if I'm actually going out to dinner, but this has changed. But I get treated right. My girl's parents respect me, and I'm still comfortable. Untuck It. Simple as that. All right, don't 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 just take Shoulders' word for it though. Try untuck it for yourself. Visit untuckit.com and use code idiots for twenty percent off your first order. They even offer free shipping and returns on all orders in the U.S. That's u n t u c k i t dot com and promo code idiots twenty percent off your first order. Let's get back to the show. Hey, so, can we deep dive on? Um, can we deep dive on what businesses aren't going to make it out of this pandemic? I, I would love to. Let's go. Have you given any thought to that? Because I've been really sitting here thinking about it, and I was doing an episode of Flagrant, and um, I don't think that the movies in theaters makes it out of the pandemic. I think movie theaters close. Yeah, you know, um, AMC is already saying that they don't think that they're going to recover from this, and it's interesting because, uh, first of all, it's interesting that all of these multi-million dollar corporations are living paycheck to paycheck like the average fucking mm. American. That's That's... It's, that's insane to me. But also, um, this guy came to me like six years ago with this idea. And his idea was basically, you know, a screaming service for the movie theaters. Now, mm -hmm. the problem with that is you can't get no production companies and shit to agree with that. Because, like, why would they support your idea when they could just do something like that themselves? And it yeah. basically was like a Netflix for movies. And, you know, the past few weeks we've been home. I watched Onward at home. I watched Invisible Man at home. Invisible Man sucked, by the way. Yeah. I watched Invisible Man here at home. And I like that. When they was talking about Black Widow coming out on Disney Plus, I was like, hell the fuck, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Make it a one time buy. For, for, so if you so if you want to buy it as a as a consumer, you gotta continuously purchase it every time you want to watch it. I would sit here on my fucking couch and pay that twenty dollars to watch Black Black Widow on Disney Plus. The problem with that is, and it makes so much sense, Marvel can't limit it to just Disney Plus. Because Marvel does, I think they got like, I don't know how much subscribers Disney Plus has, mm. but it's a big difference between putting it out on the screaming service to where you have a limited amount of people that subscribe right. to Disney plus as opposed to opening it, you know, mass market yeah. worldwide. But I, but I agree with you. I just, um, I don't see how, I don't see how movie theaters make it out of this, bro. If I was AMC, that's what I would do. I would start a screaming service. Oh, hundred percent. It's, it's, it's an interesting thing about the virus because what it does is it, it exposes preexisting conditions, both physically and economically, right? Like, when you if you physically are ill before you get coronavirus, you got lung disorder, you have lung cancer or something like that, you're a smoker, 
Corona can really fuck you up and it can kill you even if you're not old, right? But it does the same thing to businesses economically. Like the movie business was already trending down. Movie business in terms of going out to the theater, right? They were selling less tickets. It wasn't as popular. And uh, the pandemic has really kind of like seized it. And it made us all realize, oh shit, like why do I want to get dressed up to go see a movie I might not even like? I'd rather stay in my sweatpants, watch my 4K HD television with crystal clear audio that I have on my Bose speakers that I purchased on my comfy couch with my girl, maybe my kids. I have a I have a delicious meal, not some buttery bullshit popcorn and some like a crunch bar that I'll buy for 50 bucks at the cash uh, the cashier or whatever it is. Well, you're right. But let me tell you something, Mr. Privileged. Yeah. I had to think about this, too. Yeah. Everybody don't got nice TVs, bro. Son. Everybody don't got that surround sound in the I crib, hear this bro. Shit. I hear this shit. Everybody don't got nice TVs. And then I see people punching themselves and punching each other in the face every Black Friday for a fucking flat screen. Okay? <laughs> so don't give me this shit that poor people don't got TVs. Okay? Black Friday gives poor people everything they goddamn need to watch the movies that they want to watch. Simple as no, that. you're right. Okay? You're right. If I see another 300 pound Puerto Rican woman punch a white lady in the face to get a Samsung <laughs> and then you going to tell me that they don't got no fucking flat screens, You're that right. girl got a flat face. You're right. Where the fuck are all you fighters on Black Friday? Don't tell me you don't got no nice TV. Go get You're your TV, right. bro. Go You're get absolutely it. Right. I was with you. You're absolutely right. I do like the movie going experience. I'm not going to lie. It's a good date night. You know what I'm saying? I love I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. It comforts me. Go on, go on that. It just does. Like, you know, when I, I you, sometimes like when you, you know, you're dealing with anxiety and, you know, you may have like, you know, your bouts of depression, the movie theater makes me happy. And you know what I love even more than an AMC? What? I love a movie. I love a small movie theater, a small, uh, uh, I don't know what's the word for it. Um, family owned yeah. movie theater in a small town. So this is why I, I live in. Huh? So this is why I was thinking about that. I don't know if movie theaters go away entirely, but I think what you'll have is like events. So let's say uh, Marvel comes out with a new movie, the, the, another Avengers, not like they are going to, but who knows, whatever, another Avengers, right? Maybe, you know how like some bars would put on the fight on pay-per-view and everybody would go to the bar to watch the fight? Yeah. So maybe what happens is small independent places, maybe it's, excuse me, a theater, maybe it's a comedy club, maybe it's a local restaurant, whatever, they put on their own versions of the movie that they'll they'll buy from the movie company, and then you have people have a nice dinner, they have a good meal, it's not bullshit, you're not sitting in a bunch of seats that got bed bugs, but you're actually having that date night experience and going to see the movie. Like, to be honest, maybe drive through movies actually have a, like a resurgence. That could be kind of dope. You're in I your like car, the nice with night. The reclining chair. I like the movies with the reclining chair. Like you just kick back. Yeah, you know I'm saying like those. Those are perfect when you take your kids to see them kids movies. You know what I mean? You know, you know the type of sleep I got in Jumanji. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Do you know? Do you know the fucking sleep? The type of sleep I got during Little. <laughs> oh my God, man! Some of the best fucking sleep ever during them kids movies. You slept bro. through Kevin Hart being scared again. I definitely slept through Jumanji. I woke up. I woke up at one point during Jumanji and was like, "Oh shit, is that Aquafina?" And went right back to sleep. Wait, was Aquafina in it? <laughs> yeah, she's in the new Jumanji. Oh, really? Yes, man. Aquafina's in the fucking new. Shout Jumanji. out to Aquafina, man. She's been killing it, bro. Um, I'm gonna be. I, I, I think you're right about movie theaters. Um, what else? What else? What else is struggling now that you don't think is gonna make it out of this, man? Like, I hate to say it, I industry. think scripted television. Scripted television, but it's killing it right now. People are obsessed with these scripted shows. What's yeah, your point you gotta on go that? Tape, you you, you got to go tape some of these shows. shows. I'm you, saying eventually when we're back. Oh, in, you mean done? I think I um I don't know, man. I, I haven't thought about it. I actually was thinking about the businesses that were going to thrive. Like I was saying, like the like the audio business is going to thrive, mm -hmm. radio, podcast, mm -hmm. book business is going to thrive. Um, you know, whether it's hardcover books, whether it's audible books, they're going to thrive. Animation is definitely going to thrive. Animation is literally the only thing that you can really get moving right now. If you had a cartoon in the works, I guarantee you they're sending those people over to those studios to do those voiceovers. It's just you and an engineer. That's it. In and out. You could be by yourself. That shit is definitely going to get moving. Um, what, what, I think about, it's gonna get what about retail? I wonder if retail, the way we know retail, like nah. all these stores were already nah. falling apart, right? Like Barney's went out of business. Done. All these other stories are already going, they're going bankrupt. The pandemic Done. hits, right? And now people can't go out to these stores and buy. And I think during a pandemic, 
you start to realize how you really purchase clothing. Like the days where we would just go into a, what was the store back at Jimmy Jazz or some shit in the city? You know, where like you just walk into a store that has a little bit of everything. You buy sneakers, jeans, a fucking hoodie or something like that. I think those days are done. I think what we do is we're really niche in the way we dress where we're like, Oh, boom, I like my jeans from Subi, but I like a hoodie from over here. I like uh, my sneakers from over there. And I think that we start purchasing things online that exact way. So instead of going to a uh, Urban Outfitters to get everything, we'll go online to the specific stores we want, buy, and if we don't like, just return. How long you been with your girlfriend? Say again? How long have you been with your girlfriend? A year. And you haven't realized that yet? <laughs> Son, here's the thing. Here's the thing. How women shop and how men shop are different. It's like... Oh, you mean men are going to start shopping like women, baby? Exactly. Like, oh, that, okay. Because women doing idea, that now. Because here's the thing. Men, we don't return things, right? Like, if I buy a pair of jeans and it don't fit, I have a pair of jeans that don't fit. That's just how it works, right? So Taylor I, just texted me and said, women need to try clothes on. Who said no, that? No, Taylor. Taylor. <laughs> who said that? Taylor? Oh, Taylor said women need to try clothes on. Look, no, we need Taylor. to try clothes on, too. We just won't return them if they don't fit. And everybody's weight doesn't fluctuate like yours, Taylor. Oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> shit. <Bye to> <laughs> oh, shit. Taylor, Taylor taking shots. <laughs> Taylor. Taylor. Go, 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 go. Al, Al brought up another thing that I wanted to bring up as well. But I also no, think I just said Taylor's, Taylor, I was about to say Taylor's before on Monday. After on Thursday. No. <laughs> but then before again on that next Wednesday. <laughs> I hate y'all. are you before or after right now? Shut the fuck up. I am the thing. <laughs> yeah, all right. All right. Let's post a picture. You know this there's been okay. a lot lot less selfies, huh? A lot less thirst traps out there, huh? I, I've noticed. There's nowhere to get dressed up at. Say what? Nah, because y'all don't want to show off your apartments. <laughs> y'all take all those pictures in the guy that's taking you out's apartment. I have no. I have a very nice apartment. Mm-hmm. 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 Anyway, back to the clothing thing. So I think men will start shopping more like women. And um, also another thing that I think changes completely is delivery. What do you mean? So like, you know how now when you go out to a restaurant, well, not now, but pre-pandemic, you go out to a restaurant, right? You ask for a reservation at eight o'clock, right? Yes. And the restaurant tells you, Okay, we got a res- we have a eight- we have 8:15 or we have 8:30 or we have whatever, right? But when you call for a delivery, you just get your food whenever they can send it to you. There's no time. I think popular restaurants when we get back to business, I think a lot of restaurants will will fail cuz they can't stay open, but I think the ones that do stay open will be ram packed because that will be what exists, right? And most people won't have more money to invest in a new restaurant anyway, so we won't have yeah. a lot of new restaurants and the ones that are there are going to be the really good ones. And I think what happens is delivery becomes the exact same as uh dining in in that you request a time for your delivery. And they have slotted times for your delivery. Like we have an 8.30 delivery available. We have an 8.15 delivery available, but we don't have 7.30 when you want to get your meal. And I think people start eating at home at a given time based on the restaurant's availability. Smart, smart. Um, Could work, right? What were you saying, Al? Go. I think restaurants are going to suffer because people are learning to cook. Oh, that's another thing. So Al Al thinks restaurants will, will suffer because people are learning how to cook and they're learning how how I don't want to say easy, but how effectively they can make a delicious meal. I think y'all discrediting one thing when it comes to that, though. A lot of times, man, you know, even with the movie theater, even with the restaurant, it's not about necessarily the movie or the food. It's just the experience going out. Motherfuckers just like to go out, bro. So here's the thing about going out, right? The movie and the and why movies a little bit different. And I think food is a little different. You're out, but you're not connecting with people. And I think now when people go out, they want to connect. Like, I think fucking concerts, dude. Like, the first time you could go out to a concert and sing with thousands of people your favorite song at the same time, that's going to be an unreal experience for people. It's going to feel like 4th of July, fireworks. You ain't, getting, you ain't getting that shit for another year and a half. So I don't know, man. I'm curious nah, about it. Bill Gates said it the best, and I agree with him. Bill Gates said until there fuck is... Fuck Bill Gates. No. Bill Gates said <laughs> Yo, until there's an Bill accurate, Gates, bro. He said until there's a, a, a vaccine, he's right. You know, you know where he's testing that vaccine, bro? That's not true. You know where he's testing that? Ask India. Ask Indi- Go to Robert. Oh, who, I thought you about to say Africa. RFK? Go to RFK Jr.'s Instagram right now. See his last post. Bro, they testing that shit right there in Rikers. Yo. You motherfuckers that's doing it. Well, <laughs> who's in Rikers? 
I mean, some African Americans. People doing life. By the way, if you were doing life you in do prison, life in Rikers, bro. I don't fucking Rikers know. is a but jail. If, <laughs> but if you listen, if you were doing life in prison, yeah, and they came to you and they was like, "Look, we want to test some vaccines out on you." You a comic book guy like myself? You try it. You might turn to Luke Cage. Is that what happened to Luke Cage? Yes. <laughs> was, they tried was, to vaccinate him. I don't know if it was vaccination, but it was some type of experiment they was doing on him while he was in prison. He Bro, became Luke fucking Cage. That might be a way to do it, except the vaccine. Yo, you don't think they're trying some slick shit with these vaccines, bro? And every goddamn Hotep, every black Israelite, Andre 3000, they all been telling us this forever. This is nothing new. Wait, what are They've they saying? They've been telling us not to fuck with the vaccine. Y'all give anti-vaccinators hell. Anti-vaccinators been telling y'all, like, don't take these vaccines. No, I'm listen, I'm pro-vaccine. I think vaccine is what allowed, you know, people to fucking live decent lives and not worry about like stubbing their toe on something metal and then just dying a few la days later from tetanus right uh that being said it is a little interesting that you have someone like bill gates who's like sneakily almost predicted this a few years back to all of a sudden be ready to go with these vaccines and it's just like he's not ready to go with the vaccines he's just funding he's funding the research for the vaccines you got to think about a guy like bill gates he's a billionaire so he has access to some of the most brilliant minds in the world. He has conversations with people like Bill Gates didn't say nothing that George W. Bush didn't say. George really? W. Bush was like, George, yes, George W. Bush said, if we don't get ahead, I, I don't know. I don't want to I don't want to misquote him. But he basically talked about how we have to have a global pandemic team and take a global pan, a global pandemic team in place, because eventually there will be a global pandemic in fucking America. Like Joe Rogan been talking about shit like this. Yeah, it is. Like, an this interesting isn't, thing. This isn't like. New information to anybody. It is an interesting thing because it's the, let's say, hypothetically speaking, if you want to get a little conspiratorial, it is the perfect way to get people to do what you want them to do. Because now it's not just about you, it's about the people you could affect. They're basically like, let's say some bad guys out there, some bad actors out there are like, all right, we want to put a chip in everybody's arm so we can control what they do. Or we want to put a vaccine inside everybody's body so we can kind of like manipulate their bodies in some way, shape, or form, et cetera. You can't just tell them to do it because we're too rebellious, right? But you can say, hey, you got to do this to protect your grandma. You got to do this so you could kill your granddad. You got to do this so you could kill old people. Now it's not about you. It's actually selfish if you don't do it. It's kind of genius manipulation technique. Yeah, but millions of people get vaccination shots every year. The flu, they do the flu shot every year. I never do a flu year. shot. I never do I don't, a flu I don't, shot. I don't do it either, but millions of people do. Like they often don't them you do it. Because I grew up listening to Hoteps. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up because <clears throat> I grew up listening to motherfucking Hoteps, man. And you know, it used to be this sign in the barber shop. I used to get my hair cut in Mount's Corner. I think it was a professional barber shop. They had a sign, and it was this dude with this big ass needle, and and it said vaccines or viruses. What are they injecting us with? And yeah, that shit they, just always stuck with me. They do I put never, a little in the of the virus in, so you could get yo. They just put the tip in. That shit works. Tipping. Hey, tipping works, bro. Has it not worked? Yeah. It definitely works. You it put definitely the tip works. in, I mean, the girl builds up the antibodies for your dick, and then you start fucking. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and then you look at your kids. Your kids get shots early on. Like, I, I, I don't know why people are acting like, uh, you know, the next logical step after coronavirus is to find a vaccine for it. They literally, that's what has literally happened to every single oh. fucking flu. You need a vaccine. It's just yes. how they enforce it is going to be interesting to me. I mean, look, I perform live for a living. I had to push my special back. My special is going to be in November 13th and 14th, I believe. Uh, so we changed new dates. Anybody, if you want, those tickets you have are still available for those dates. Um, but I had to push my special back. And I think that the people will feel the most confident going back out to live events if a vaccine exists. So I'm pro vaccine. I want that vaccine immediately. Yeah, how I was talking to my guy, Aaron Magruder, yesterday, man. He brought up a good point. He was talking about just that. He was like, you know, not only are people gonna feel not gonna feel comfortable gathering together until they get a vaccine. He was like, yo, the, the, the people that are in the most danger when things open back up mm -hmm. is people like us. Yeah. Wait, why? If you haven't had the virus yet. Oh yeah. If you've never been exposed to the virus, you know what I'm saying? You yeah. haven't built up the anti antibodies. So yeah. when we go back out into the world, unless we've had it and didn't know it, like 
we're we're going to be super exposed to catching. Yo, that's the fucked up thing about like testing the vaccine. Like you hear like they're testing the vaccine in Africa, and like part of you is like, man, that's fucked up. You can't do that. But then there's also part of you like. Well, they got to test it somewhere. You know, like, where, why where are you going to test that Africa? shit, bro? <laughs> go to Russia with it. Go somewhere. Don't test fucking it here, Florida. bro. Florida. <laughs> go to Florida. They don't care already. Go to fucking, uh, where, where's hey. Joe Exotic from? Hey. Oh, uh, uh, Oklahoma. Omaha. Nebraska. I'll go to Omaha. Oklahoma. Son, we got to do it somewhere. Who, who wants to get tested, bro? You know what? Maybe we should make people earn that $1,200 the government's going to give them. You want that $1,200? Take no, this you just gotta test. Start. Just, just start giving out comic books in jail, bro. Give them Wolverine, give them Captain America, give them Luke Cage, give them all of these people who got their powers because of government experiments, yo. Yeah. That's all. And these people that are doing life in prison, that's, I'm talking about these guys that are doing 80 years, 100 years, they, and there's no hope of them getting out. Not, you ain't up for parole till 2075 and you're already 40. In the words of President Donald J. Trump, what do you got to lose? There we go. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> Dude, what if that's a hey, bro? That's actually a great thing. Why don't we take all the people that have extremely long sentences and say, hey, here's this vaccine we're trying out. If you live, you get to get out of jail. Ooh. Bro, that's a good roll Who of the would dice. Who take that deal? That's a good roll of the fucking dice. You either die in jail or you get out now. We're not talking about, you know, murders and rapists and that kind of shit. We're talking about you, you're like a drug dealer. You got some crazy, you know, you stole shit. Like one of those, you get long sentences for doing something that's not extremely violent. Okay. I wonder the percentage of people on death row uh -huh. who know they committed a crime, have made peace with the crime that they committed, and they know that one day they're going to die. Those are the people that probably... To get tested, to get Boom. the vaccine tested. Get the vaccine. There you go. See if it works. If not, because you're already doing it. Like me, like a lot you of you actually a lot die of a hero, bro. You die a hero. A lot of states do lethal injection. So if you give them the option, like, look, we're gonna test this on you. If it works and you live, you're free. If it doesn't, you die. You're already on death row. This is a phenomenal deal. I don't know anybody that wouldn't take this deal. 100 percent if you think you're innocent you wouldn't take it yeah but you're not getting out anyway yeah you're not getting out anyway i don't know man but what were we talk? how do we get on bill gates oh yeah yeah about the vaccine thing that's yeah all. you didn't like you don't like you don't like bill gates i don't trust <laughs> it bro something's going on i think that bill gates is one of these people that get too much flack just because he's a fucking billionaire and it's not his fault that he literally invented something that changed the world like we have to stop rich what shaming you invent, people yo Microsoft. What is that? I don't fucking know. That's the thing with Bill Gates. I think he's tight. I think on some level he's tight that he will be forgotten because nobody knows what he invented. Like Steve Jobs. Microsoft. We don't know what Microsoft is. What is Microsoft? Isn't it the fucking Wi-Fi program? Or isn't it a computer program? Son, we don't know. Like, Let me Google. Could you go buy some Microsoft? I'm sure you can. Nobody listening right now, or the majority of people listening right now, got no fucking clue what Microsoft is. Yeah, but we see that shit every time we turn on our computers. You Literally. see it, but you don't know what it does. What is Microsoft? Think about it. What does it do? It's software. Microsoft. Microsoft is my dick when I get out the pool. Yes, it's the, exactly. It's the operating system for PC computers. Did you know that? Yes. Okay, so here's the thing. I didn't First know what to call all, it. You thought it was Wi-Fi. You didn't know that. Stop I it. I did. The same Stop difference. Stop it, okay? It, it makes your computer work. Listen. <laughs> it's the same fucking difference. The motherfucker invented that shit before the internet came out, and he thought it was Wi-Fi. There's no... <laughs> you see that shit no matter what kind of computer you got. When you open up that shit, you see Microsoft, man. So I the think, world don't move without Bill Gates, baby. Wait, see, that's some bullshit. We don't know if it moves or we don't know if it doesn't move. I think that Bill Gates wants to be known for something. And on some level, he's got to accept that there is nothing that we will remember him for. in Microsoft, the Andrew. Oh, we don't know what that is. Yes, Yo, we do. Steve Jobs. What Steve Jobs make? Say it. Say it with your fucking chest. The Apple products. <laughs> hold on. If I got a mistake, hold on. Let me see. Chris is texting me. What is it? Oh, yeah. Chris says the company that makes Word Doc, too. Thanks, Chris. You know, man, bro. Stop hating. Son. I think you mad because you kind of look like him without glasses, bro. <laughs> Stop hating on Bill Son. Gates, man. I'm not Always. hating. I'm just skeptical, bro. I'm skeptical. Now, here's the thing. 
Why are we so skeptical of billionaires? Because we should. It's a weird thing to be. It's a no, weird it's thing not. to have that much money, bro. You it's can weird. get there. Say what? You can get there, Schultz. I don't want to. I have no care to. If you I might, wanted you to. Might, listen, it might happen by accident. You might invent something that literally changes the world so much. And then in the process, and then in the process, I would have to absolutely crush and destroy my competition to get there. Nobody becomes a billionaire ethically. It doesn't happen. I don't believe that. There's not one ethical billionaire that exists in the whole world. Well, there's no, I mean, listen, it's impossible, right? Because even if you, if you, if you get in the computers built, them shit probably getting built in China with child labor. You know what I'm saying? The the Apple iPhone, that's not your fault. I mean, you You decide to have them built there. That is your fault. You decide to have them built there. What else you going to build them at? You want to do child labor in Florida? Yeah. (laughs) Keep them kids off the streets, bro. Why can't you do child labor in Florida? Keep them off the streets. Keep them off the beach, man. Why Florida is the Why Florida is the, the litmus test for everything? Son, it Florida started in Florida. Florida is the new Bronx. <laughs> no, the Bronx is the Bronx, and then it's Florida. Now Bronx used to have it down, and then all of a sudden Florida came out, and they were just wilding, bro. Yeah, the bro. last Yo, few years Florida's gorgeous. taken over. You're right. You know it what? Because you're the, right. The Bronx came up too much. It, it got too successful. You got Diaz Romero, Cardi Di Zemero, B, Cardi B, French Montana. French, like, it's the like the they Bron- they it learned to take that crazy and focus it. You know what I'm saying? Then they gave us AOC, and it's like, what the fuck? This isn't the Bronx. The I'm Bronx used to. Is, I'm gonna call the Bronx Riverdale. The Bronx is. <laughs> I'm gonna call the Bronx Westchester. I'm not even. And Bronx don't exist like it used to exist, bro. The Meanwhile, Bronx is Florida's bougie. still out here. Florida's still out here ignorant as fuck. Ignorant. And you gotta love it. You got to respect it, low key. Yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah, have yeah. to respect it. So put them kids to work. So here's my thing on Bill Gates. I think he knows people don't remember him for making anything. We see the sign, but we don't know what he made. How Everybody do you keep else. Saying, this is the most brilliant idiot take we've had in months. Go, go. Everybody knows Bill Gates made but things. But we don't know what they what we don't know what he made. Microsoft. Son, if I ask you to write down what it is, it's you the would operating stare at system the paper. for the PC. And then what? Your computer don't work without it. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> you, you, so, you so, no so what is it? It's the heart? Is it the heart of the computer? I don't fucking know. I just know that when you turn <laughs> the goddamn you, you don't on, know. Nobody knows what Bill Gates did. As far as I'm concerned, need, he did nothing. No, that's not true, How you man. know computers even need an operating system? It has to. Oh, How God. would it cut on? Maybe it doesn't. Maybe this whole time he's been selling us nothing. No, when you cut, yeah, when you see. <laughs> One of these buttons has the Microsoft shit on, the, on it on the, on the fucking keyboard. Yo, you know how easy it is to pick up your fucking iPhone and go, man, Steve Jobs made this. You know how easy it is to pick up your AirPods and be like, man, Steve Jobs Just, made this. Oh, no, see, that's the thing, right? You're, 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 you're thinking about the tangible item that's in your hand. It's literally like that's saying, what we air remember matter. over time. The printing press. What was it? Gutenberg? Was it Gutenberg? Gutenberg made the fucking printer. You remember the things you Bill can Gates hold. Bill Gates way more popular than goddamn Gutenberg. No, he's not. First of all, Gutenberg ain't been hot since he fucking was wrestling in the goddamn WCW. All right, <laughs> he used to come out and motherfucking spear people and body slam them. Son. When he got to the WWE, he was whack. I didn't even know he made the printing press. Wow. Son, made the printing press, bro. Think about other things, actual things that were invented, okay? Those okay. brothers that made the airplane. Wright brothers. Wright brothers. Boom. You know what they made? A fucking airplane. They didn't make Bill the Gates, operating want- system for the airplane. Nobody knows Bill, who the fuck when, made that. When they that. ask you in the future, what did Bill Gates make? You're going to say Microsoft. Hey, what did Elon Musk make? Say it, bro. Tesla. Electric car. That shit been invented forever, but he made a, a, an electric car that we will all remember forever. He made the rocket that comes back to Earth. You're not going to remember what Bill Gates made, bro. Nobody's going to ever forget Microsoft and Word Doc. <laughs> like you're a comedian. You write jokes on Word Doc. First of all, I no, write I don't. books in Word Doc. No, I don't. I do not write jokes on Word Doc. Okay? I do not write. I do not get my fucking Word doc open and hit the return button a couple times. And put in the Bill Gates is the man. Like his his logo is so recognizable. You see what is it, it called? Microsoft Word. It's called Microsoft Word. You don't even know the name of it. That's how little you go remember Bill Gates, Microsoft, bro. Microsoft, baby. It's all Dog. Microsoft. The Son. man fucking named an a operating system for a PC after his dick. Son. All right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And we're going to remember him forever. I don't think so, dog. 
I don't believe in questioning. Bill. I, don't, I don't believe that logic of, of billionaires have to do something wrong either. I just think that some people tell me a billionaire who is completely clean. Just give me a completely know. clean. Here's the thing. I don't know what they've I think done. I got one. I think I got one who's pretty clean. Oh, the guy who owns Starbucks. Howard, I think he's pretty Howard clean, Schultz? bro. Yeah. Howard Schultz. Your cousin? I think, my cousin. OK. <laughs> Yo, there's going to be people here who actually believe he's my cousin. I think we got to correct that line. <laughs> and they always see you with Starbucks cups. It's like, it's like you sneaky motherfucker. I knew this motherfucker was rich. I knew he had his Starbucks money this whole fucking time. How, Howard Schultz has been funded. Yo, son, um, yo Al just Howard, goes, Al goes, you're dressed in their colors. <laughs> you are dressed in their colors. Howard Schultz has been funding Andrew Schultz's comedy career for the past two years. Let's bro. go. Trust me, he hasn't. But no, I don't know if he's clean either. Listen, I don't know. Not, we don't. Here's the thing. We don't know any of these people. Somebody put that in the atmosphere one day that billionaires have to do foul shit in order to become billionaires. And now we just look at all the billionaires sideways. When the truth to the matter is, can we just admit we're jealous? Can no, we just admit jealous. we're envious? Can we just admit it's kind of some hate, bro? I'm not jealous. I'm not jealous. I'm not either. Because I look at them and I say, what's going to be the idea that I create? that changes the world and, you know, makes my family well off for a very, very long time. I think that I got a couple now. I think that I'm in the process of launching a couple. Which, what we'll you, see. What you got? What's one of them? I wait till the press release comes out. Yo, first, And I wish that I didn't even have to put a press release out on it, but that comes with the territory when you are yeah. a person in my position and when you're doing things with the people that I'm doing things with. Press releases help the launch of things. Uh, gotta get it. Gotta do it. Okay, you know? can can we see your hairline? Nah. You said you were going to show it to us this week, man. Come on. Uh, it's not as bad as I thought, though. Let me see it. Let me just see. The top of it. Top? I want to see where the hair starts. Don't show us the part that's actually there. Keep going back. <laughs> Keep going back. <laughs> Keep going back. God damn, bro. Keep going back. <laughs> bro, <laughs> you look like Black Robocop. Keep going back. <laughs> You still don't see anything? <laughs> nah, keep going back. Is it in yet? <laughs> <laughs> dude, keep going back. This is insane, dude. You still don't see nothing? Son, have you just shaved, bro? Keep going back. <laughs> keep going back. Keep going. Hold on. I already Come folded on. the hoodie down Son, twice. Why are you even wearing a hoodie if you don't got no hair to cover at all, bro? You can wear a Jesus yarmulke. Jesus Christ. There's hair, right? A little, maybe a little bit. Yeah. Keep going back. A little grass on the infield. Bro, keep going back. Hey, dude, Microsoft is the brush you use. <laughs> bro, I don't know how the fuck barbers aren't considered essential workers, bro. Dude, I tried to get mine to come up from North Carolina, bro. I'm ready to risk it. Yo, we got to, dude. We just got to risk it. I'm ready to risk it. They already wear gloves and a fucking Put face thing. Put the gloves on. Put the mask on. I'm ready to risk it, bro. Yeah, and they're cutting your hair from behind you mostly, right? So it's not like they can breathe into your mouth. Let me check your temperature. We good. Done. I think we got to bring it back. Keep conversation to a minimum. Like, let's go. Ty, what's happening? That's it. That's man. my barber's name. Oh, okay. I thought you had someone calling in. Uh, uh, um, think, let me, let's, let's do some more things you won't care about next week. Uh, did we talk about... Um, I think I mentioned this earlier. You said you thought they were lying. Wuhan in China has... Um, up. My phone about to fucking die. What Wuhan in China opens back up after three month lockdown. After what? After a three month lockdown, they've been locked down for three months, and and now Wuhan has opened back up. But you say you don't believe China. I mean, I, do you believe China? Yes, and I'm gonna tell you why. Why? Because uh, there's a Chinese city that that finally banned its citizens from eating dogs and cats. It's the city of Shenzhen. Okay. And it's in Wuhan, and they are banning the consumption of dog and cats beginning May 1st, calling it not only common practice in developed countries, but part of the demand and spirit of human civilization. Now, think about, think about like chicken over here. Or, yeah. Um, what's, what's the meat? The steak, a good steak. Yep. Imagine us really because something that we were doing over here caused the global pandemic. Because you know that's what they say. They say that they were experimenting on the animals. In China, right? And uh, in Wuhan, they were experimenting on the animals and they didn't um, set the animals on fire. 
No, that's not what it was. That's what they're lying about. What they're doing is they have these wet markets where they just sell any fucking animal. You can buy a jellyfish out of a bucket. You can buy a penguin. You could just buy anything. This is why all the viruses come out of China is because they're still dealing with animals, right? And uh, there's this YouTuber named CGP Gray, and he puts out these like great informational videos. But there's one, I think it's kind of about this. And it's been something that's kind of curious, but nobody ever asked, right? It's like, you know, when like white people came to America and they gave smallpox to the Native Americans? Native Americans. Right? But nobody ever asks, why didn't the Native Americans give their diseases to the white people? Right? Technically, they both should have their unique diseases and then give it to each other and then wipe each other out, right? The issue, the reason why they didn't is because they didn't have any diseases. Because Native Americans weren't dealing with domesticated animals. They didn't domesticate any animals before or white people Native came. Americans Say again? Or maybe Native Americans weren't psychopathic genocidal killers who wanted to wipe out. <laughs> like you gotta, you gotta be thinking about germ war. Well, no, they were, they were, they were psychopathic and genocidal to each other. I mean, that's documented. But in terms of the small box shit, like why didn't just being around them give off the disease? The reason why white people have had so many diseases is because they've been around animals for so long, right? So like, if you look at like in England, I think the cholera outbreak happened because they're around pigs and shit like that. Basically, as any society starts to develop, you start to have animals, you domesticate the animals, <clears throat> now you're kicking it with these animals, and when humans are kicking it with animals they're not supposed to be kicking with, eventually these viruses or diseases start popping up, and then people end up dying. China, they still do that shit. The rest of us are like... I mean, animals have parasites and, you know, viruses and shit that exist within them that that are compatible with their immune system. They can live with us. Not us. Exactly. So now we get them shits from the animals, right? Because we're living in such close proximity, we're not supposed to be doing that. And China still does it when they have these wet markets. So if they want to shut down the wet markets, then we're not going to have these diseases pop up every few years like we have. But until they do that, we're still going to get a disease every few years out of China because someone got to eat a bat or someone got to yeah, fucking but, wrestle but, a pig or someone got to eat a fucking, I don't know, whatever That's why it I is. salute the city in China. Though. I salute the city in China because they stopped the consumption of dog and cats. There like, you go. This, I guess it's big. Yeah, it is big. It's part. That's like, that's like somebody over here stopping the consumption of meat because the meat isn't healthy. As, as vegans have been trying to tell us for years. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's big. I don't think that they eat as much dog as we eat steak. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't think they do. I mean, that's my you gotta If you have to put a law in place to stop the consumption of it, they eat they, some They dog, might be bro. eating a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> There's a dog filet out there somewhere, bro. Right. And I'm not even eating. Hey, hey, hey. There's a McDonald's. There's a McDonald's. <laughs> McDonald's. <laughs> All right. If they if they got to stop the consumption of it, they eating a lot of that motherfucker, bro. If they got to make a law to stop it. It's going down. Uh, yo, you're right, man. I can't say you're wrong, bro. If you got to implement a law. Yes, man. Like you don't build a wall unless motherfuckers are trying to sneak in. That's what I'm saying. You know? It's going down like China built a wall. China built the wall. China said the consumption of dog and cat is done. Should we should we bring them in? Hit his drop one time, Taylor. Let's bring him in. I know he's dying. Can he, Chris? Can he chime in? Chris, are you muted? You got to unmute your shit. I'm on the I'm radio. Unmuted. Can you hear me? Now we yes. can hear you. Go. Chime in, Chris. I mean, I don't. I don't think they eat that much dog in China. Obviously, they eat it more than in other places. Not but in China. Yeah. This it's particular city. I can't remember the name of it. I had. Uh, we got it written down. I can't remember the name of it. It's a city in Wuhan, though. Well, so near- Wuhan is a city, but. That, that doesn't kind of prove the point because dogs and cats, whether you're eating them or not, are already domesticated. You're already in contact with them. I think yeah. what you guys are talking about is other animals that we wouldn't normally be in contact with that they're catching in the wild, <laughs> bringing them in, and then eating them. Correct. That's, that's non, probably more Non-domesticated the animals. Right. That's the issue. You can't be around non-domesticated animals, right? Like Native Americans didn't have horses until white people brought them over. They didn't have anything domesticated. So they just so why went they around to eat? Why they stopped the consumption of the dogs and the cats then? I think it's a PR move. They're like, man, they know that we eat dogs and cats and they make fun of us for it. All right, cut that shit out. But you could still sell a turtle in the middle of the street in China. You didn't hear the city I named, Chris? I said the city in the beginning. The one that has the dog right festival now. every year? There's like yeah, a I think dog that's in Korea, festival. actually. No, let me get it. Hold on. <laughs> there is a city, and they did a, somebody did some like documentary on it, but there's like this big dog festival every single year. Matter of fact, I should look up on my phone, and maybe they shut it down there. But that's like you said, Chris, that's not the issue. 
The issue is you just can't be hanging around these fucking animals and then just having them out there in the open or else eventually people are going to catch some weird shit from them. Yeah, I mean, I think the Native American point's a good point, but the, the other thing I would say to further that is the other advantage, the reason Native Americans didn't have diseases, they didn't travel w much beyond their natural boundaries. The reason Europeans have been trading diseases and Asians is they travel all over the world for thousands of years. Yeah, yeah. and, and when you travel... Shenzhen, Shenzhen, Chris. Shenzhen? In, uh, a Wuhan province. So yeah. when you travel around the world, that's a good point, and you're bringing these animals around the world that people aren't used to living with, that's when you're going to trade that disease. I mean, like the Black Plague, the Bubonic Plague, like that was started from rats from China. Yep. Rats from China came along the Silk Road or whatever it was because finally there was trade between Europe and China, and uh, they also traded some of their lovely uh, plagues with us. I'm going to tell you something, though, man. Y'all fronting. If we've, if, if we've ever had some of that rat on a stick, man, that shit be hitting. Yo, I'm not, I'm not saying it's not. <laughs> some you, of, that, like, you would some have of them foreign animals out, be hitting, bro. You would have to start me out with a squirrel, like something more aesthetically pleasing. You know Love what I mean? squirrel. You eat, you've eaten squirrel? Hell yeah. I, love, I had squirrel in West Virginia. Um, salute to the Buckwild family. I was thinking about them this week. That's so crazy. And Shane died. Uh, I think Shane died on April 1st. So it's been it's April 8th. So, yes, <clears throat> I don't know how long it's been since Shane's been dead. But, yeah, we had squirrel dumpling. We had bear shoulder. Oh, I want to try bear, bro. Bear, that bear like shoulder was hitting, bro. It was good. Duval didn't like none of it. I cleaned my plate. Yeah, but Duval just eats appetizers and McDonald's. Yep. We had deer has squirrel, deer has squirrel dumpling and bear shoulder yo, with fresh green beans that they grew. Yo, Duval said the funniest shit when he was on Rogan. Like, he said he only eats fast food, right? Because fast food is good, right? And Rogan's like, yeah, but haven't you seen those studies where, like, they take a McDonald's hamburger and they just leave it there for 15 years and it looks exactly the same? And then Duval looks at him, he goes, ain't that good? <laughs> 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 and Loki, he got a point. Like, if the food doesn't go bad, maybe it's not that bad. All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second. Pay some bills. Listen, how is it that most cleaning products make you feel so dirty? That is the exact opposite of their intended purpose. Okay, they got these chemicals inside them. You're using these plastic bottles. Traditional cleaning products are surprisingly messy in their business practices. That's why there's Clean Cult. Okay, Clean Cult makes natural cleaners that actually clean with ingredients that you can actually understand with packaging that's actually landfill free. All right, and they're off the plastics. They got these cool glass bottles. It looks really nice. You can put them around your place, and it doesn't look like you have just detergent or soap sitting there in their disgusting boxes. Okay, Clean Cult is as is as effective as leading brands of detergent, so you get the same level clean with none of the chemicals. Okay, if you have kids, why are you putting chemicals around them? If you have yourself, why are you putting chemicals around you? Don't worry about 5G. Worry about the chemicals. You go to cleancult.com, get a customized starter kit and adjustable paper-based refill delivery service that fits the needs of your home and lifestyle. You can finally break up with plastic because Clean Cult is the only company to put soap in milk cartons. That's right. The refillable uh, cartridges that they have are in these milk cartons. It looks wild. Then you see it and you're like, okay, I'm actually helping the environment and keeping myself clean. Clean Cult has thousands of five-star reviews with name... It was named uh, uh, a top 250 consumer good company in 2019, and they've been sponsored by National Science Foundation in their innovative work in natural ingredients. And their sleek, shatter-resistant, evergreen glass bottles reduces plastic waste and looks gorgeous on the countertop. And Clean Cult's sustainable shipping system allows them to be carbon neutral. You hear that? You're not affecting the environment. You're making your personal environment much cleaner. This is a no-brainer. They're delivering it right to your house. You can decide how much you need and get on that delivery system. De cleaning your place could not be easier. I can't fathom why you would want to go to the CVS or supermarket or whatever and carry those massively heavy bags made out of plastic, by the way, Back to your apartment with all those products when you could have it shipped right to your door. It's a no-brainer. Simple as this. Right now, go to cleancult.com slash idiots for 25% off your first kit, but only until May 30th. You heard me? You only get this deal until May 30th. 25% off 
now through May 30th at cleancult.com slash idiots. Cleancult.com slash idiots. Clean up your life. All right, let's get back to the show. Listen, uh, things you won't care about next week. Um, Ellen DeGeneres. Oh, uh, yeah. She, she, she was in her mansion, um, which I'm not mad at, you know, and she's quarantining with her wife. Yeah. And she said that um, she feels like she's in jail. Uh, sometimes I, I forgot what the exact quote was. Taylor has it, but she said she feels like she's in jail, yada, 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 which a lot of people are no, saying. No, she had, you know, she had context for it. That was funny. What was the context, Taylor? I feel like I'm in jail because I can't go anywhere and everybody's gay. <laughs> yes. Play the clip, Taylor, if you got so it. So it was a joke. Uh, this, this is like being in jail is what it is. It's uh, mostly because I've been wearing the same clothes for 10 days and everyone in here is gay. Listen, comedian, uh, good joke, I guess, kind of basic, but bad timing. Yeah. The reason is bad, the reason is bad timing is because if you see what's happening in these prisons right now due to the coronavirus, it's not dope. It's not sexy at all, bro. I what's mean, happening? Got, what's happening in those prisons? Well, you got um there's a prison in uh Ohio. Oh, can we stop right now? Yes. Takashi's free. We got to talk about this, bro. We can talk. Yeah, let's let's put the, let's put a button on this Ellen thing real quick. Bro. All right. But you, you you look at what's happening in the prison. <laughs> um you had this guy uh, he called from this low security prison in Ohio. He was showing himself on the FaceTime and he was just showing prisoners around him sick. He's got a year left on his sentence for a nonviolent drug offense. Wow. He's like, I might die in here. Yeah. You know, you saw the letter that Taxstone put out a couple of weeks ago about what's going on in Rikers. Taxstone said he feels like he's in a grave with his eyes wide open. Wow. You know, you see, um, it was a brother in Louisiana. He had like a year left on his sentence for a nonviolent drug offense. He died. If you look at what happened in California, they let like 3,500 inmates free. Yeah. Right. Because they're just like, look, these guys got they don't have they have a little bit of time left on their sentences. They're nonviolent you know, dr- drug offenders. Let them go. Like, let them go. Yeah. So, you know, for Ellen to say that it was just a little little tone deaf, especially when you have people putting a lot of resources into the prisons right now. Like, you know, Jay-Z and Meek Mill them just sent a lot of PPE to Rikers Island. You know, um, when you see people releasing the prisoners because they don't want they don't want them to die in jail, because they know that's what potentially could happen. Yeah. But it was just a little tone deaf, Ellen. And if I was Ellen, it's an easy way to clean this up. Easy. Just bring Van Jones on your show. Let Van Jones bring light to what's happening in some of these prisons. You know what I'm saying? Bring some attention to it. So some of these other governors, some of these other, you know, state yeah. officials take heed to what they did in California, what they're doing in, even in, in New York. Like let some let some of these prisoners go. That's all. The nonviolent drug offenders with or, long sentences, let them go. Or you could prove how gay it is and drop that porn. <laughs> what? What's wrong with you? Come on, son. You don't want to see that Ellen porn. You want to see her dance now? Show me that dance, girl. No, what are you talking Come about? Come on, bro. Absolutely not. You wouldn't watch an Ellen porn. I thought you like old woman porn. Now all of a sudden you don't? No, I want her to use her platform to help bring light to what's happening into these. I want prisons. her to use That's her platform for porn. And I think she will, because a lot of people <laughs> were, were tweeting her and stuff today. And all you got to do is bring Van Jones on. Let Van Jones speak about it. Now, we can talk about 6 9 um, <clears throat> 6 9 is about home. porn. Let's talk about 6 9 <laughs> We can talk about 6 9 because, like I said earlier, you, tap you have that? brilliant people. You have idiots. But you have are you going to do what you promised to do? No, because I won the bet. You said if six nine gets out of jail, no, that's I'm not a what I said. Gonna, he's a dick. I said if six nine beats his case, yes, that's what I said. You said if, if he, he beats beat his, his case, case, you're sucking that dang a line. He didn't beat his case. He didn't beat his case. No, he didn't get out before he was supposed to get out. No, six nine sat in jail for a year. He ratted on everybody. He did rat. He ratted on everybody, yeah. went to court, yeah. and they told him he had another year, and then he went there for that year, and then God bless him, coronavirus happened. <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you something. I wouldn't He's let He's one of the guys I'm talking about. I wouldn't let you suck his dick, bro. I wouldn't suck his dick. I won the, I won the bet. I wouldn't let you, though. Listen. I'm his, not going to let dick. him see the top of your head like this, bro. Listen, here's what kids need to understand. <laughs> not until you get a haircut. Charlemagne won the bet. <laughs> Say again. I won the bet. So he got to suck said your dick? I if he beats his case. He did not beat his case. So does he have to suck your dick? Nah. 
I was just being I was I was I was being uh I don't know what the word is. What's the word? Facetious. I know what the word. No, it wasn't facetious. It was another word I used to use. It was hyperbole. Word just, hyperbole. Got you, bro. There you go. Got Bang. You, I was going to call it hyperbole. I'm like, no, that's not what it is. Hyperbole is the next disease to come out of China. Hyperbole. <laughs> okay. Hyperbole. <laughs> hyperbole is what that was. I was just letting people know that there's no way he's beating this fucking case. All right. And he didn't I was beat so the case. Confident, I was so confident that he wouldn't beat the case you were, that I offered to do that. You were willing to put your lips on the line. And you know, and not only did I do that, I provided entertainment for the internet for ever. You really did. Now I they will now, not let that shit die. Six nine is out. We gotta talk to him. We gotta have a conversation. Not interested. He should go on Ellen. You probably will end up on Ellen. And talk about what's really going I'm on. I'm not in jail. interested. I thought what he did um this week was corny. What'd he do? Um, there was a post on the shade room and it was something about Oh, yeah, that shit was funny. Was a as mayor, a governor. Man, that shit was funny, man. That shit ain't funny. Come on, bro. I'm going to tell you why that shit ain't funny why? because you ruined a bunch of people's lives and you think that shit is a joke. Who? Like, and, 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 and when 6ix9ine did that, he showed me that he has not learned from the era of his ways at, of, oh, at all because, of course because check it out. You're, it's people out there that will, that will really kill you for that. For. Like, Snitching? Snitching. Uh, and you're going to come home and make a joke about it? Like, hey, 6 9 to the rescue. Those kids and shit may laugh at you. 6 9 you have not escaped the wrath of the streets, bro. But here's the thing. Relax. It's like once someone's going to kill you, nothing you say is going to make them kill you more. Like, he's already got the death penalty. So at this point in time, it's like there's no risk in trolling because I'm already going to get killed if they ever see me. That's that's the, I mean, I get what you're saying and you're absolutely right, but that's not the way to live life. That's not the way to live when you've gotten a second chance at life. Yeah. Regardless, regardless of how you've gotten that second chance, regardless yeah. if it was because you snitched or not, that's no way to live that life, bro. Like, would you'll be happy. You, would you ever talk to him? Would you ever have an interview with him or have a conversation? I don't think so. Really? I don't think so. I don't see the need. Because for me, it would just be an I told you so. Because, you know, when I did the first interview with him, and everybody said I was trying to troll him. I wasn't trying to troll him at all. I was just telling him how this shit was going in. Bro, and I, should we try to touch our fingers together and you just go, E.T. phone home? E.T. phone home. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, nah, I, really I really don't think I would interview this. Kind of I don't see like any reason. With the hoodie on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see any reason for me to want to interview 6 9 But... I think that you would obviously make an interesting interview. You guys have that funny joke and banter, but there could also be a situation where you press him on the shit that he did. I don't think it's worth it. That's we fair. We know what he did. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's like, I don't get anything out of that. That's just me being like, for what? Like, we know what he did. That's literally like praying. I've been thinking about this. Okay. You pray to God, right? Yeah. And tell him what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> right? And tell him what you need help with, yeah. as if God doesn't already know. Right? We were we were talking about this last week, right? It's like it's, yeah, like, it's, it's the stupidest logic in the world. Yeah, so yeah. I don't get anything out of telling six nine what the world already knows. Six nine knows he read it. Yeah, six nine got to live with that every day of his life. Trust me, he don't feel good about that. You think he doesn't? You think he doesn't feel good? No. That that tweet that that caption was him putting his toe in the water. And I'm telling you, 6 9 don't come out. Really? Don't do it, bro. No, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't play with, don't play with it in that way. What you do you think is going to happen to him? Honestly, what, what do you see happening to him? I really don't know. I don't want to predict his future because I don't want to put any negative energy his way. Right. Um, but it's going to be very interesting because you, really, you, you never could believe him to begin with, but you really can't believe him now. You definitely can't come out and start rapping about no gangster shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And if you rap about being being a snitch, that would be a great angle. That would be something we never seen before. But that ain't going to fly. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really don't know. I don't know where 6 9 goes from here. To be totally honest, I'm sure that it'll be plenty of people wanting to interview him. I'm sure it'll be plenty of documentaries made and all types of shit. I'm sure he will have no shortage of, of work opportunities. But I'm, I'm, I'm not interested. I wish him the best. Can I, don't, he make, I, don't, I don't wish bad on him. Can he make a living after <clears> this? Yeah, because he can still put out music. And can he stay safe? Probably not. 
Depends though. But I would say probably not. Only reason I say depends is because it just matters like, you know, the only what world he chooses to be in, but that don't even matter no more. If they if they want to come get you, they're gonna come get you. And yeah. you just don't know, you just don't know who he's pissed off. It's not even about his direct enemies. I'm telling you, it's people that don't like rats. Rat ratting is not some hood shit. You know that shows that's mafia ball shit. That's yeah. fucking nobody, nobody likes a snitch on any level. Yeah. They don't like white collar snitches. They don't like hood snitches. They don't like the snitches that snitched on the mafia. They don't like snitches. So I don't yeah. I don't know where he goes from here. And be honest with you, I don't know. I know those kids won't care. Those kids will still buy his music. Mm. They don't they don't they don't have those same values. Yeah. They don't give a fuck about the street light. They give a fuck about his that, antics and him making people laugh. That's an interesting point that you brought up is that it's not just the people he snitched on. People in general don't like snitches. So now like, he's going to get huh. different treatment. He's not going to get protection when he goes to certain cities because you can't protect a rat. Word up. There's going to be a lot of complications. I never thought about it that way. That's really interesting. Is yeah, we when looking at it from snitch, a rat perspective. Yeah, it's like when you snitch, you remove yourself from the protection of the street code, if you will. Like you go to a certain city, there are guys in that city that you could hire to protect you. They're not professional, but they're going to get the job done and they know everybody in the city and they call everybody in the city and go, hey, listen, don't touch him. He's hiring me. Everything's cool. Correct? Yeah. Is that kind of how it goes? Pretty much, yeah. So now you can't call on those people. Now you got to get what, like a regular security company to like walk around with you? Like, how does he leave his house? Bro, nobody likes snitches. You think, why you think nobody's, why you think nobody testified against Donald Trump? Fear that he was the president? And that he was going to hold them accountable. You snitch? You think you're going to snitch on me? Yeah. You fucking, you know, have a, have a career, have a life, whatever. Like, yeah. no. Yeah. You don't play that shit at all. And guess what? The ones that didn't snitch get protected. That's all. That's why I say you got to celebrate certain ones. That's why I'm like, damn. When I look at hip hop and I look at the laws, and I've said this before, when I look at the laws that hip hop, um, you know, has and champions and celebrates, by hip hop's law, Bobby Smurda should fucking come home to millions of dollars. And be a king. He He should be. That is interesting. I think we were having a conversation. It was me, you, and Van, right? And we were having a little group chat, and I asked, why is it that he can't snitch, like, if they threaten his family or they did these types of things, et cetera, right? And it was you or him said something interesting to me. You were like, if, what what was it exactly? It was something like, it's, there's a difference. When you snitch on people that you do illegal stuff with, there is a code because you're all agreeing to do something illegal. So if you get caught, you're all making that choice. Absolutely. Something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, if those people you're working with break that code, not by going to the feds, but by coming after you, you still can't snitch? I don't think so. So it's one of those things where if you operate illegally, you have to understand there is no protection from the police no matter what. You sign that agreement when you decided to operate illegally. Yeah, I think it's no honor amongst thieves. Right. So uh, when you're in a circle like that, why would you expect, you know, any type of loyalty, any type of nobility from any of those people? Yes. Those people may flip on you and kidnap you one day. Yes. Those people may flip on you and kill you one day. Yes. If all of y'all get busted one day, one of y'all might snitch like there's it's it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's the den of thieves. Yeah. <laughs> it's like they're, they're, they're criminals. You know what I'm saying? Like like they some of them might operate with different codes, but. You clearly, he wasn't one of them. And you know, you kind of got to blame them for bringing him into the fold. What but it's mean? like, man, I don't even, I'm not even interested in the 6 9 shit. Like, I'm about as interested in, t- in 6 9 as I am in goddamn Drake Tootsie Slot. <laughs> Yo, that shit is bombing, huh? That shit what? That's bombing. Yeah, I think it's whack. I think it's whack and I think it's beneath Drake. Yo. Um, I, I think that when you're the biggest artist in the world, when you're the biggest rapper in the world, um, I don't like to see you chasing trends. You know what I'm saying? It's like, why be a why be a surfer when you're a fucking wave? You know what I mean? I just didn't respect it. I'm like, and, and it, it don't matter. The shit might still work, but I it just don't seem organic. A lot of times with those dances, those TikTok dances, I see them, they're just organic. It's a it's a song people like, and then somebody does something to it and it goes. It was like it felt too forced. It felt 
too corporate, too, too industry. And I just feel like Drake has built himself up into such a way that he don't have to do that shit, man. He it was the first time I seen him look thirsty. It was the first time I seen him yeah. hop on the wave instead of being the wave, like you said. It was a and it's and it was too it was like he sat in a room and he was like, okay, everybody's at home. They can't go outside. Why don't we tap into this dance craze shit that's on TikTok? I'm going to break TikTok with this song. And like you said, if it's not organic, it's not going to ride. People no. need to feel like they're doing something. They need to feel like they're part of the creative process. And he gave instructions how to do the dance in the dance. It should never be that way. And it reminded me, like, you're familiar with Betty Crocker, right? Course. So Betty Crocker back in the day, right? They he had shit, though. they had the cookie mix back in the day, and they had everything done where you just add water, right? And nobody was buying it, and they were like, "Why the fuck is nobody buying it?" And it turns out the the people that were cooking it, the housewives, they didn't feel like they were actually baking. So what they did is they said, "Add an egg." Now, if you get some cookies right now, some cookie mix, they always say, "Add an egg," right? Everything's in there, just add an egg. Right. Yeah, and now you feel you, like they're doing it on their own. Now you feel like you're doing it. On. He didn't let you add the egg. He's like, I'm going to put the egg in. I'm going to just do everything. All you got to do is add water and then it's done. And people do not like that. Let me add the fucking egg. Yeah. And I watched the fake. Um, I watched the fake organic shit he tried to create around it. Um, I watched academics post the video. I think it, I think the guy's name is actually Tootsie, who's a dancer. I saw Act post the video and they were dancing to Drake's song a couple weeks prior. Yeah. And I'm sure he reached out to Act and asked Act to post that. And then I saw him leave a comment and he was like, yo, I'm going to put this out since y'all turning up to it. And so then he put it out the next week with a whole video attached to it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it just, I just didn't like that for Drake. It's, it's literally like watching Jay-Z do a Snap record when Snap was hot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just like, yo, you the, you the biggest. I'm, I'm really, I really want to say this. I don't know if Drake knows he's Drake. I wonder, I, it's something about a lot of the moves Drake has made lately make me feel like he doesn't realize that he's Drake. Like, bro, you're, you're, I don't give a fuck how much people clown you, how much I've clowned you over the years. You are solidified. You are absolutely a legend. Like, right mm. now, at this point, you're playing for legacy. Yeah. If you want to make a dance record, cool, fine. It's music. You put it out. You know, music is subjective. I think the shit is corny. But... It almost feels like you're just trying to stay in tune with what's going on now. Yeah. And I just want to tell you, bro, like, yo, why be a fucking surfer when you you're the wave? wave? And he is the wave. It is weird. The maybe, wave. I don't know. Maybe he put out a few songs that didn't really catch on. You know, he's put out a couple songs since the last album that didn't really, you know. <laughs> Corona. Got him. Got him. <laughs> Let's go. They don't even say God bless you no more. They just say Corona. Corona. <laughs> but yeah, maybe he put out a couple songs. They didn't really pop off. And then he started to get a little nervous. And he's like, let me get a guaranteed hit. Let me just do this dance crazy shit. And then he tried a little too hard. You know, he went a little over the top with it. I mean, it's I don't possible. even know if it's a guaranteed hit. By the way, that's a record Drake could have gave to somebody. Yeah. Like, it's not, it's sonically not a bad record. It's just whack for him. Yeah. You know what I mean, sonically, it's not a bad record at all. It's just like watching Drake do that is like, eh. Yeah. Get that to a little kid in Canada, man. Get that to some little 15 year old, 16 year old kid. You know what I mean? Let him do that and you just pop up in the video dancing. Yeah. The next thing you know, people are like, oh shit, you know Drake wrote that. Oh, what? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I, 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 just, I just didn't like it. I, I, th I thought it was whack. Maybe it'll work. Only people I really see doing the dance is other celebrities. And that's because there's really no artist. There's not too many artists who got as many celebrity groupies as Drake. Well, that's the thing. It's like you can tell when it doesn't resonate when the kids aren't doing it on TikTok. I didn't see it. I haven't it's seen not. It I'm not saying they're not. I haven't seen it. They're not. It's not really taken over. A few celebs tried to do it. A few like like lower tier NBA players try to do it, and uh, because it's Drake, right? Because they're huge fans of Drake, as they should that's be. It. He's fucking incredible. Yes. But again, if you try too hard and you force it too much, people can tell. And maybe they didn't catch the act thing that was, you know, maybe orchestrated. A lot of people don't realize this. So much of this shit is PR. So much of this shit is orchestrated. Everything I that you see it. is like organic or you think is like, oh, this just happened to go viral. They're doing it on purpose. You know what I mean? Like, but this one was definitely this one was definitely done on purpose. I mean, even it's a little stuff like I just see him doing things that I normally um 
wouldn't expect from him. It's like weird. What? You know what I'm saying? I mean, everything like this, the pictures of the sun, you know, popping up on, you know, people's Instagram lives, you know, uh, he putting out, he's putting out a lot of music, which is good, but you know, the music ain't really like sticking, sticking. And then, you know, I saw him on live. I didn't see it, but I heard about him on live one night previewing music. And it's just like Drake. You're Drake. Yeah. You're Drake. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you are certified King. Like don't ever let nobody tell you different. You don't have to follow no trends. You don't have to surf no waves. You are the motherfucking wave. You're you're leaning into your executive producer bag. You're an EP of Top Boy. You're an EP of Euphoria. Like, bro, I just want you to know you are Drake. Yeah. That's it. That's it. I don't want like please just always remember so that. So what should he do now? What's the next move? If you were if you were managing Drake or you were consulting Drake, what would you tell him? I mean, Drake should do whatever it is that he wants to do. Now, you know what, what would you but, tell but him? I would tell him lean into his EP back. So you know, I think music? Drake has put out enough music that I think Drake has put out enough music to last us for a long, long time. I would tell Drake that if you if you really feel like you want to make music, you always want to record. Cool. But if I was Drake at this point, man, I'd be giving away a lot of those hits. And the reason I would be giving away a lot of those hits is because, you know, Drake still hasn't necessarily broke an artist of his own. He's helped a lot of artists pop off, but he hasn't necessarily created another star. And I think the only way Drake will be able to really, really create another star is if he commits solely to that one artist. And he's not he's not thinking about any music for himself whatsoever. He's not in album mode. He's not in nothing. He's just in the studio working with this person, trying to make this artist the best artist that they could possibly. Be. You know what I'm saying? I think that... um. That's what I would be doing. I would be if I was Drake. My, my my sole focus right now would be, you know, let me empower as many people as possible. Even though he's already done a lot of that, yeah. But you know, it's just time to it's just time to breed breed the next generation of star. You know, you 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 a certified star. You've been in the game a decade. It's not going nowhere for you. It's not going nowhere for J Cole. It's not going nowhere for Kendrick Lamar. I, that's why I love Kendrick so much because Kendrick really picks and chooses his spots, man. That's who I can't wait to hear from again. Kendrick Lamar has mastered the art of old celebrity. Yeah. What I mean by old celebrity. Walk away, mysterious. disappear. Yeah. That's it. You hear from him when he wants you to hear from him. And you hear from him through his art. Yeah, maybe, Nothing more, nothing less. Maybe, there ain't no yeah. salacious headlines. It ain't no, we saw, you know, Kendrick at Starbucks. You don't get none of that. You see Kendrick when you see Kendrick right. and every time he comes out, he shifts culture. And I think, you know, we also have to remember that this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. You know, yes. It's not about being it's not about being the most relevant person at the moment. It's about being the person that's going to be hot forever. That and is I think true. Kendrick is really playing forever in a real way. That is true. But at the same time, you can't be the number one rapper in the world if you're doing it the way Kendrick is doing it. You have to be doing what Drake is doing to be number one. And maybe Kendrick doesn't want to be number one. And maybe that's what we love about him so much. Maybe we love the fact that it's just the music that he cares about. You know, but Drake definitely wants to be the number one rapper in the world. And he wants to hold that belt every single year. And um, and that's fine. That's great. Yeah. Some, nothing, some, some people awesome. care about constant relevancy. Some people care about ultimate legacy. And and I think I think Drake's I think Drake has already legacy. solidified his ultimate legacy by the yeah. by, by the way he does things. Yeah. But you don't have to chase constant relevancy. Like you don't have to be the person that's involved with every conversation. You don't have to be the person that's on every trend. Sometimes it's cool just to sit back and observe and be a fan. Yeah. You know what I'm saying like to me that's how I get inspired. You know, like for me, I'm I'm most dangerous when I'm quiet. You know, even though you hear me every day. But what I'm saying is when, when, I'm, when I'm just sitting back observing, watching everything that's going on and figuring out what's missing in the landscape, what, what, what value can I really add to the current climate of the culture? And if I don't feel like I can add any value to the current climate of the culture, I'm going to think about what's next. Where are we going? Is, no? is, Kendrick, is Kendrick like Nas if he could pick good beats? Nah, a little stronger than Nas. No, not in terms of like wordplay or ability, 
I mean, because Nas is, is phenomenal, but in terms of like the way he went about his career, because I never thought Nas was thirsty nah. to be in the limelight or in the spotlight. Kendrick is um, he was about a way the music. Bigger, Kendrick is a way bigger star than Nas has been. You think in Nas's peak? Yeah. You bro. think Kendrick was bigger now than Nas was at Nas's peak? Yeah, and that's no knock to I don't want nobody to take because everybody loves to say, oh, Charlotte may be hating. That's no knock to Nas. I'm just talking about in terms of stardom and celebrity. You compare Illmatic, which was critically acclaimed, to Good Kid Mad City, which was critically acclaimed and commercially successful. What about Stillmatic? Critically acclaimed and commercially successful. Yeah, but that was like that was like seven albums in. Let me see. Stillmatic was let me see. Illmatic, it was written, I am Nostradamus. I think Stillmatic Still. was the fifth album. Right? Stillmatic was the fifth album. It was album. written. It was written. No, Illmatic, Illmatic it was written. It was it, it was written. I am I am Nostradamus. Nostradamus. Stillmatic? Still or Matic. one more. I think it was Stillmatic. I think Stillmatic's the fifth one. Okay. Somebody Google that for me, but I think Still Magic is the fifth one. Okay. Fifth album. Yeah. Hendrix only on his technically third. I mean, you can count Section 80. That was a mixtape. But count that a mixtape because rappers back in the day didn't do mixtapes like, like rappers do now. I, I, count, I count Good Kid, Mad City as his first official project. Which So Good Kid, Mad City, The Pimple Butterfly. Damn. Hmm. He's three albums. Okay. And you a uh, multiple enough. Grammy winner. Fair enough. Multiple fair enough. platinum artist. Fair enough. No, uh, uh, fucking, he won a, what, what did he win? The Pulitzer Prize. <laughs> like Kendrick is a superstar, yeah, bro. Yeah, we just yeah, don't, yeah. we don't appreciate Kendrick because he's not around like that. But Kendrick is a superstar in a real way. My mom knows Kendrick Lamar. Yo, you know what it might be? You know how, like, and I think we had this discussion, like, when Jordan was in the league, nobody else ate. Like, nobody else got a ring. Like, and I think there could be something to how Drake has has tainted the perception of greatness about the uh, around the artists, around the artists that were around him. Because Drake, I think, has been so good that without Drake, maybe we look at Kendrick as that. Maybe Kendrick I think, is. I just think it's a matter of we see Drake all the time. Drake don't take no breaks. Yeah. Drake does a lot of features. Yeah. Puts out albums every other year. Yeah. He's always around. And if he's not always around for his music, he's around in the news. Like, Drake is always around. That's, that's the only difference, I believe. Yeah, he's like the Kardashian of rap. Yeah. Yeah. Drake, Drake, is, a, Drake is a very traditional rap star. A, a, a very traditional music star. You know what I'm saying? You're going to see him sitting sideline at the games you know what i mean you're gonna see him dating the celebrity chicks like he's gonna have scandals and shit like yeah. that but Kendrick he Lamar's also got a, Kendrick Lamar got a wife you know what i'm saying yeah he's in the cut with his family but kendrick lamar got kendrick lamar is a superstar with a lot of fucking money at his disposal and i really love the way he moves and i really love the way he does things and i think that for me he's always been the leader of the new school for this new generation. Like, I, I, you know, you look at them and you say the three-headed monster, the new three-headed monster is Kendrick, Cole, Drake. For me, right? for me, Kendrick is number one. Now, if I'm being objective and I got to put, you know, everything on the table in this totality, of course, you can argue for Drake to be number one. But when it comes to just that that rap and, and you know, being a music artist, I got to put, I got to put Kendrick at, at number one. Kendrick, Kendrick, number one. I'll put Drake number two, then Cole number three. And then my other favorite rapper of the past decade is Rhapsody. That's just off straight talent, you know, and pure skill. Right. But Kendrick is, I, I can't wait to see what Kendrick does, man. I really, I re, I'm really looking forward to Kendrick's next project. You know why? Another reason for what you was talking about earlier. You get older. You got more experiences. You know, he's married now. He got a child. He's seen a lot more life, mm. you know, and plus just the way the world has been the past few years, like, and Kendrick is that type of person who absorbs all of that and puts it in his music. I can't fucking wait mm. for Kendrick Lamar's new shit, man. I really can't. I really can't. Yeah, someone's going to have to deliver an album during this quarantine that's going to service all of us, you know? Someone's going to have to do it. I don't know who, I don't know who it's going to be, but there is room right now for someone to deliver music that's going to kind of capture our feelings and will really gravitate towards that person, man. I wouldn't give it to... If I was them, whoever the person is, I don't think I would put it out till next year. Oh, wait on it. 
Bro, you got a lot of good shit about that. First of all, we don't know how this shit about to end. Yeah. That's number one. Yeah. Then we got the election in November, baby. You know what I'm saying? You about to see a whole lot of shit that you ain't never seen before. Mm. Let me see. It's going to be hard to keep smiling. And I can't remember the rest of whatever the fuck Tupac said. Uh. Taylor, let's do some asking idiots and get the fuck out of here, please. Er. I don't have my phone with me. You got it? You got some shorts? Nah, I don't got it. Taylor, we're going to need you to chime in. Give us some asking idiots. Stop stuffing your face. <laughs> four times since this podcast has been on. Taylor, I have... <laughs> Taylor, we're going to do three asking idiots and get out of here because we got a long... This is a long episode already. Okay. Um, well, y'all kind of already answered that. Uh, for... TJ Bottle Pock, he wants to know who should give Kobe Hall famous speech. Ooh, good question. Oh, who should give who should give Kobe Bryant's Hall of Fame speech? I mean, obviously, you know, you're gonna say Jordan, but I would actually really like Phil Jackson to do it. I think that's it. Phil, right? That's it. Got We haven't Phil. seen Phil speak. We didn't see Phil speak at the memorial. Uh, the memorial, or oh, I think that's what you call it. What was it called? The memorial. I think the memorial. Yeah. Yeah. You don't. You didn't see Phil speak at the memorial. I haven't seen. I, I personally haven't seen a statement from Phil Jackson. I could be wrong. I haven't seen one since his death. Um, we saw Shaq talk. We saw Kobe talk. I don't think they should put Vanessa through that again. Plus, it's about basketball. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's about yeah. basketball. It's about it's about that legacy that he left on the court. I definitely think Phil Jackson would be. Um, Phil. Phil would definitely be the best person. All right. What else, Tay? Um, okay. From Island Boy. You just like oh, that sorry. Ring? Huh? Nothing. Okay. Um, I don't I can't really read this guy's name, but his name is Ravishing Ravishing Rich Rude. Before becoming successful, do either of you have a backup or were you fully invested in making comedy radio workout? And so what was the backup? Fully invested, no backup, but never believed in a backup plan. I feel like it hurts you in a lot of ways. I think that you can protect yourself when you're going through something, but I only have one thing that I want it to be, and I just put everything in that. So, yeah, I don't really believe in, like, a backup career. I believe in backup having some money saved. I believe in backup, you know, having some investments, but I don't believe in backup. I'll just do this other thing because you let that creep in there, and then you can't be totally focused on the thing you want to do. Yeah, I never had a backup plan either uh, simply because, I didn't go to college. You know what I'm saying? I graduated from Berkeley High School in Mount Corner, South Carolina in, in, in night school. And so when I finally did get into radio, you know, doing an internship, it was everything to me. You know, I didn't I didn't I didn't know anything else. I didn't go to trade school. I didn't have any other other skill set. I was like, this is what I loved to do. And I didn't even know that you could make millions of dollars in radio until you know, I started studying the craft more. So, um, yeah. I didn't. I didn't have a backup plan either. For me, it was radio, all or nothing, baby. All right, last one, Taylor. All right, uh, from Maddie Mars. What are three things you can't live without during the quarantine time? Not including family or your significant other. Not including family or my significant other. Um, yeah. Wi-Fi. Uh, Wi-Fi, the the studio uh, where I record the podcast out of, and my uh, my electric bicycle that I call a motorcycle. Yeah, for me, it's um, uh, therapy, exercise, and technology. Ooh, exercise, good call. Yeah, therapy, exercise, and technology. Those are the three things that I can't live without. Those are the three things that are keeping me sane. When I say technology, I mean all of this, the fact that you know, I have the mixer here and I can, you know, broadcast and do the breakfast club in the morning. The fact that we're able to tap in and you know do the podcast via Zoom, um, you know, social media, you know, just for the interaction with people and the interaction with, you know, uh, folks on folks on Instagram live and just watching what's going on in the world. That's amazing. Being able to scream TV shows. Um, I haven't checked out Quibi yet. I'm going to check out Quibi. Um, and yeah, you know, therapy for me is is is. Not only talking to my um, sacred purpose coach and talking to my therapist via phone or FaceTime or whatever it is, you know, it's really just that self care of just of being still and meditating, you know, because I keep telling everybody, man, we keep praying, you know, asking God to hear us. And that's not what this moment is about. 
This moment is about us hearing God. Mm. So, yeah. That's it. That's it, baby. We did it, man. Yes, sir. Um, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right, too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Oh, yeah.